nestled in the beautiful Shenandoah Valley in Lexington, Virginia, sits the campus of the oldest current member of the Southern Conference, Virginia Military Institute. In its more than 150 years of existence, VMI has educated thousands of citizen soldiers. Today, they host six-time national champion Georgia Southern. They are led by record-setting fullback and Heisman Trophy candidate Adrian Peterson, who has never rushed for under 100 yards in a collegiate game. The Eagles are ready to soar today against VMI. And welcome to Alumni Memorial Field in Lexington, Virginia for Southern Conference football. Today, top-ranked Georgia Southern taking on the VMI Cadets. Beautiful weather here in the Shenandoah Valley today. Fall weather, the leaves are changing. Uh, nothing much changes at Georgia Southern, though. They're always outstanding when it comes to college football, especially at the 1AA level we're talking about here. And a program that joined the Southern Conference, Ted Byrne, in 1993. Uh, they continue to just roll throughout conference play. Indeed. They, uh, dominance in 1AA football, really, Jim. You know, two consecutive back-to-back -back, uh, 1AA titles. They've won the Southern Conference consecutively. They continue to dominate in almost every offensive and defensive category. Certainly, Georgia Southern is, is a team to be reckoned with in 1AA. A football and especially the Southern Conference. Well, on offense, you're talking about Adrian Peterson, their outstanding fullback, one of the best all time at the 1AA level. Out of Florida, he just keeps running. Great feet, great balance, and, and he really is the key to this uh, offense and consecutive 100 yard games as well. And then on defense, you have to talk about the defensive tackle and Freddie Pescada. He's getting his 20, he's got 24 straight starts already uh, coming into this game, and he really is the leader uh, in this, in this uh, defense for Georgia Southern. On the other side, VMI. Right. You have Cawthon, Gene Cawthon, a, a great uh, running back in his own right, had 154 yards against Duquesne. He's going to have to have that same kind of performance today in order to put VMI in a, in a good position. Now, special teams for VMI today will get a lot of play if Georgia Southern's offense is as potent as they usually are. And that's going to turn it over to Titus Green. This is an exciting young man. I personally hope to get to see him handle the ball. They're going to try to get the ball in his hands a lot. Last week, he had 53, 48, and 42-yard returns in the kicking game. Special teams will play a big part in this game for VMI. A tough stretch of Southern Conference games for VMI after Furman. Today they get Georgia Southern. We'll get you ready for the kickoff of this game when we come back after this. A couple of minutes away from kickoff here in Lexington, Virginia. Welcome back along with Ted Byrne, Jim Zoki with you for the Southern Conference football game today with Georgia Southern taking on VMI. A couple of minutes ago, the uh, new American flag was presented to VMI in memory of David Williams by the class of 1991. David died in service to his country in the Pentagon attack on September the 11th. He was an English major and a naval cadet who took an active duty uh, Navy commission upon his graduation. And they've established a David Williams Memorial Fund. So the Institute has graciously agreed to fly this flag each year on September the 11th as a memorial to David Williams and to the countless others that died on that tragic day. Certainly a colorful uh, ceremony prior to the presentation of the flag to the family. And with all the pomp and circumstances that normally go along with a military school and their football games, this a little extra special today as the family uh, is receiving the flag. But uh, absolutely gorgeous day in the Shenandoah Valley as we have a few clouds in the sky, but uh, we're starting to see some blue sky up above. A little bit of a wind, 62 degrees going there. And uh, the cloudy is the forecast for the remainder of the afternoon, but it's great football weather. Feels good outside. I just like the way you do weather. I think you've Thank got you. a future in that. Too. Well, you know the weather <laughs> channel. I can be a weather girl. Paul Johnson. On the sideline there, of course, Paul, very successful coach at Georgia Southern as uh, he's in his fifth season with a 53-8 and eight record there. And uh, he's uh, been the mastermind of this offense that Georgia Southern runs. And uh, certainly uh, as uh, an assistant at, uh, at Navy in the past uh, over in Hawaii, uh, he's got a, a great history and uh, certainly is a, a coach well sought after. Uh, here is uh, Cal McCombs. His road to VMI has led as a graduate assistant at South Carolina, coached for many years at the Citadel at the Air Force before coming to VMI. This is his third season here at uh, VMI. Military man uh, through and through, and VMI will have the football first when we get to action here. And uh, a little bit different from uh, what most Southern Conference teams do in terms of offense, Ted. They'll run the run and shoot type offense and, and throw the ball more than any other team in the Southern Conference. Run and shoot, something you see mostly in the NFL, but 
certainly something that uh, VMI has turned to and has worked very good. Titus Green mm -hmm. is uh, a man that they're going to try to put that ball in his hands as much as they can today. He's an explosive runner, an exciting runner. Should be a good one for the fans to watch. That is Titus Green, uh, the near player there, number 23, and Kevin Solomon, number 37, to his far side as well. And we talked about it off the top. Special teams will be a big factor for VMI in trying to keep this game close here in the early goings because they do have some explosiveness on that side of the football. And I'm sure VMI happy to get their hands on the ball to begin with. Georgia Southern, yeah, anytime you can keep it out of their hands, that is the way to go. And the kickoff comes to Titus Green as he brings it ahead, and uh, we'll get it across the 20-yard line or so where VMI will go on offense here. The Keydets looking for their first victory of the season. Got a penalty flag down as well. And this game hopefully will be one that won't have a lot of penalties in it, but uh, certainly to start the game off with, we've got one there. Referee is Robert Rougeau, umpire Tom Best. Lyman, Jack McElwee, and the line judge, Marshall Jumper. He's looking at the offensive line, Sam Brown, Skip Carlton, Keith Graham, Ed Webb, and Craig Howard across the front line. And the backs and receivers, Josh Lyles, the quarterback. We'll talk about him filling in. Gene Cawthon, their outstanding fullback, Titus Green, you saw on the special teams re uh, return there. Kevin Solomon, Pedro Garcia, among the other starters, along with John Puvigel for VMI. So here go the key nuts as they get an extra five yards on the penalty to begin play here on offense. Josh Lyles, their freshman quarterback, is filling in. VMI has got four injured starters, and among them, their usual starting quarterback, Joey Gibson, who'll be out until at least next week. They hope to get him back in practice this week. Lyles will work out of the shotgun here as we get underway on first down and 10. And on the delay handoff uh, across the 30-yard line, and good for a couple of yards there. Gene Cawthon, uh, again, a player who had a, a big game earlier this season, had 154 yards rushing versus Duquesne. Here's Georgia Southern's defense. Freddie Pescato, we talked about. Nose tackle, Eric McIntyre. Frenchie, Robert LeBlanc, and Jamar <laughs> Jones. Then there's uh, Michael Ward, Joe Scott, and Michael Youngblood at the linebacker in the uh, backfield, of course. Uh, James Young, David Young, uh, Dreek Cooper, and Deion Stokes. Cooper scoring a touchdown on defense in the win last week over Chattanooga for Georgia Southern. We'll talk about that defense. The offense gets a lot of attention, but the Georgia Southern defense is outstanding as well as Lyles pitches it ahead. And this is Cawthon off the shuffle pass and takes it ahead across to the 40-yard line or so before he stood up and pushed back. But that's going to be a first down for BMI. And moving the ball well on the uh, little shuttle pass there. And that's the important thing. If BMI can keep the chains moving and keep Georgia Southern's potent offense off the field, uh, I think that'll be a big key. As you see, out of the shotgun, there's the little shuttle pass to Cawthon. Great blocking there by the left side of the line. Good balance, keeping his feet there, turning back upfield. So a good start for the VMI offense, which is only averaging 8.3 points per game coming in against a very stingy Georgia Southern defense. So moving the chains, as Ted said here, on first down. They'll keep it with Cawthon again on the ground, but this time nothing doing. He's knocked down immediately, and he'll do good to get back to the line of scrimmage. Again, the defense smelling that play out. On the right side of the defensive line, Freddie, Freddie Pescada there in the middle of your picture. Jamar Jones, another one who will really be a key to this defense for Georgia Southern. A couple of uh, preseason all Southern Conference selections there. You saw Freddie Pescada along with 97, Jamar Jones. Let's bring along second down and 10 now for BMI. Early goings here at Alumni Memorial Field in Lexington, Virginia. Southern Conference football today. And they'll continue to work out of the shotgun with Lyles, the freshman. Often again. This time he's good for about four yards or so. That'll bring along third down and long. When you think of the run and shoot, you think of a lot of aerial attack. But uh, so far, VMI having good luck in moving the ball on the ground. If you can get, you know, four or five yards of play, that keeps the chains moving. Cawthon with 46 rushes, 249 uh, yards total, averages five yards a carry, has two touchdowns. Uh, right there, he got his average on that carry. Like Peterson for Georgia Southern. Cawthon also a senior for VMI. 5'10", 190 pounds. Let's bring on third down and six and uh, probably look for the cadets to put it up in the air for the first time here. Lyle's looking to do just that. He's got an open target, and that is Titus Green. We talked about him earlier, but this is not going to be nearly enough for a first down. Green averages nine yards a catch and uh, has nine catches before that pass to him there. Now he's got ten. But he just is out on the right flat there. And Lyles just backs up and turns and lets him have it in the flats and says, OK, go to work with it. But good play there on defense. David Young leading the attack for Georgia Southern. 
Another one of those preseason All-Southern Conference selections, David Young. And it'll be punting time now as uh, Georgia Southern and Anthony Williams will get their hand on the ball for the first time. He's back at around his own 12-yard line. Waiting the punt from Brent Barth. This one will not be returnable. It's going to flutter out of bounds. And Georgia Southern now pretty good field position off this punt as they'll begin around the 35-yard line. And VMI with a good punter and uh, an unusual kick for him is Brent Barth, one of the top punters in the Southern Conference. And I had one go off the side of his foot. Coach Paul Johnson will send his offense onto the field. J.R. Revere, you saw him, number nine, getting ready to head out the Eagles attack here on offense. The 3 0 Georgia Southern Eagles, who are 1 0 in conference play, coming off a 70 7 win over Chattanooga last time. All eyes, as usual, will be on number three, Adrian Peterson, the fullback in this setup. Quick hitter there, and uh, this time just a couple of yards for Peterson to get things going. On that play, here's Georgia Southern's offense. Human Jones, Clark, Daggett, Brantley along the front line. And the ball handlers, Revere, Peterson, Weathers, Myers, Owens, and Kearney. Your backs and your receivers. There is number three, Adrian Peterson. Number three, good for two yards on his first carry of the game. This time, he'll push it ahead for about three more up to about the 40-yard line. It'd be nice to feel good about that, but uh, there too, though, Chattanooga felt pretty good at halftime of the game last week, and then he took off after that as we see the BMI defense. Marcus Stiltner and Matt Pluck, Ryan Cates along the defensive front line. Mike Bradley, Derek Screen, Chris Walsh, and Ty Summers, the linebackers. Secondary, Steffi McBango, uh, Gabe Hensley, D'Angelo Plather, and Musa Sarki. So this brings on third down and five now for Georgia Southern. Revere to throw under some heavy pressure, and he's going to go down in the sack for BMI. How about that? Backside pursuit by Chris Walsh has 23 tackles on the season. Now he's got 24. Watch him coming from the backside. Little spinal tap action on Revere, but he sees, hears him coming and gets out of the way. Chris Walsh's brother, Nate, was in the South Towers, by the way, of the Trade Center when the planes crashed into it a couple of weeks ago. He got out of the building okay, and that's good news. I'm sure he's cheering Chris on right now. The punt is just barely away. Good heavy pressure there. Scott Shelton does get it away, though, and Green's got the signal for the fair catch back at around the 20-yard line. So BMI holding their own so far here in the early going against Georgia Southern. The VMI coaches in the booth next to us very happy about the way their defense played. And they should be as we are in the first quarter here at VMI. Cadets holding their own against Georgia Southern. We're scoreless in the first quarter. First quarter here at VMI. Welcome back, Georgia Southern and VMI here. Each team has had the ball once. Each team has given it up once. Now the Cadets back on for their second series of the game with the freshman quarterback, Josh Lyles. Changing the play here at the line of scrimmage. And they've done quite a bit here in the uh, opening quarter. A handoff to Gene Cawthon, but this time Georgia Southern able to snuff that one out in the loss of a couple of the yards. Eric McIntyre, number 70, in there, and a good job of smelling that play out. Watch him plug up. And this is a play that worked very good, their first possession. But right on top of it there. Officially a loss of one, closer to two, though, being a second down and uh, almost 12 here for BMI. And they spread offense here. They'll run the run and shoot. And again, they're audibleizing by the quarterback, Josh Lyles, filling in for Joey Gibson, their usual starter who's out with a broken leg. Takes the handoff this time. Lyles keeps it himself and brings it ahead across the 20-yard line. He gets back some of that lost yardage and maybe a yard more than that. Faking that run that has worked so well for them so far. And Lyles just keeping it and using Cawthon as a blocking back, if you will. Third down on the season for VMI. They're converting on about 39% of their third down situations. Here's a long one, though. It'll be third down and nine coming up. Lyles drifting out, throws up field. Lucky to not have that one picked off. Throw was made, and Drake Cooper got a hand on it, knocking it away, and that'll bring along the punting unit once again for BMI. Garcia does a good job to get open. Was curling toward the sideline on the right side, and he was open, but didn't anticipate 
Cooper coming in there and getting a hand on the ball. So this time three and out for VMI as off we'll to kick it back to Georgia Southern and that means Brent Barth back on to punt once again for VMI, averaging 44.6 yards per punt coming into this game. Anthony Williams back awaiting this punch. Barth will get it away, good kick. Really got his leg into it and it chases Williams back inside his 25 yard line. Breaks a tackle. Finally spun down at about the 35 yard line. Last week, VMI had a couple of kick returns uh, for touchdowns against them by Furman, but this time able to hang on to the elusive one, Anthony Williams, after about an 11-yard return. We talked about Titus Green for VMI and his return capabilities, but Anthony Williams is another one. He's got one that he's returned for a touchdown. And good blocking there on the special teams, moving the ball out to the 35, and any time you can start it beyond the 20, you're in good field position. Well, the Georgia Southern offense uh, gave it up on downs the first time up with a punt, I should say, and uh, they lead the nation at 59 points per game coming into this one. VMI, meanwhile, allowing almost 47 points per game, so Georgia Southern has to feel they've got another opportunity to rack up a lot of points here, but VMI hung tough on their first series defensively. Counter play, and again, caught in the backfield is Revere, trying to run that option, but he's going to lose a yard or two. Good job by VMI's Marcus Stillner. If you look here, you see VMI's got a three-man front, and the linebackers are spread all across the field, and there he is. There's Stillner trying to cut it back up, and Walsh comes on the backside of him as they hem him out. Good blocking if they could have gotten to a pitch, but they just pinched him inside. Stillner, a 6'4", 235-pound junior. You have a look at him here lining up again now, this time on second down and 11 for the Eagles. Revere looking back to throw, throwing a deep ball. But the coverage is there, and the ball is picked off. Now the ball comes loose afterwards. Let's see which way it goes on the return. With the Angelo play there at the interception, but VMI will have the football down near the 32-yard line. Play just had to sit back and wait for that one to come down as Revere hung it up high. That's the Angelo play their second interception of the season. Lots of time for Revere to throw. Great job blocking, picking up the blitz, and then he lets it go toward the sidelines, and Plather just gets high and intercepts it from the intended receiver. As you can see, he was open, but Weathers couldn't get up to the ball before Plather got up there and took it away from him. So VMI back on offense quickly here in a scoreless game in the first quarter, and a lot of excitement and emotion here in Lexington. The Cadets playing good football in the early going. It's caught and finding some running. We're banging ahead and takes it up near the 40-yard line to about the 38-yard line. Cawthon a punishing runner as he gets through the hole, and then once he breaks the initial surge of the offensive line, lowers that shoulder and really blasts through there. Cawthon 5'10", 190 pounds. Last year ran for 556 yards. That was the most by any VMI back since 1997. That carry good for six yards. Second and four. Cawthon gets another crack at it here. Takes it across the 40. He's got a VMI first down. Great job by the right side of that offensive line. Skip Carlton, a junior. 6'5", 270, number 66 in your picture. Watch the hole he opens up right there. Seals that man to the outside and forces the middle linebacker, Scott, Joe Scott, who leads Georgia Southern in tackles to come over to make that play. Victor Cabral, the offensive lineman, or our defensive lineman for Georgia Southern, the freshman, the defensive lineman who was sealed off on that play, as Ted alluded to, and a first down now for VMI. Clock ticking, about 7.20 to play here in the first quarter. This time, Lyles, the quarterback, keeps it. Bring it near side. There is a penalty flag down, though, as he gets just across midfield. Sam Brown, a sophomore left tackle on the end there, did a great job of springing that play to the, to the open sidelines. And as we said, there is a flag on the play. And we will see what referee Robert Rougeau has to say about this one. Too bad to bring VMI back as it appears that it will because it was a nice carry on first down for Lyles and holding. possibly a holding call. Yeah. On the run Ten by yards. the offense. It's a spot foul. Ten yards from the flag. Repeat first down. Thank you, Robert. The holding right there. Deion Stokes being held. He still made the tackle. <laughs> and still got away from him enough to get an arm on That's him. a You're good right. place. He got the flag, but he still made the tackle as well. 
So with the penalty, a uh, loss of nine, they keep it down though. First down and 19 for BMI. Lyle's barking out the signals to his lineman along this line of scrimmage. Side handoff again to Cawthon. Plenty of running room this time. He's banged ahead to the 45 yard line. That's good for 10 yards. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. I like the vision that he has in running the ball. You can see from this shot what uh, holes are opening up and he, he sees it sealed off there and then cuts back the other way and forcing the cornerbacks and the, the safeties to come up and make that tackle. That low center of gravity and he's the shiftiness with that uh, low center of gravity as well and that was good for 10 yards. Second down and nine for BMI. Lyle's looking to throw. Nice try, but incomplete. Kevin Solomon, the intended receiver, tried to one-arm it and tried to get one foot down anyhow, but that ball out of bounds. Lyle's just a little high with the throw to the sideline. Not much real estate to work with over there for Solomon. And he gave everything he had to try to make that catch. Cal McCombs has to be feeling pretty good about the way his team is playing on both sides of the ball right now. But with his run-and-shoot philosophy, he's brought more offense back to this program as well. Last year, they scored 227 points. That was up from just 77 points for the whole season back in 1999. So certainly more explosive VMI attack, relatively speaking, than has been in recent years. The screen, a dump off. The Cawthon again. Gets to midfield. He's close to a first down. Might be about a yard short or so, but uh, good recovery from first down and 19 for BMI to get it within a yard or so of the first down marker here. Great play call at that point as the defense was really coming hard up the middle. And of course they let him through and then they just dump it off and great blocking there being led by Ed Webb, number 68. Gets Cawthon the necessary yardage and leaves him about a yard short. Webb a 6'5", 280 pound senior. And despite it being fourth and uh, just about a yard or less, it looks like VMI is going to send on the punting unit. Well, I'm sure both coaches reminded both of their squads that VMI has never scored on Georgia Southern on this field. And I know that's something that Cal McCombs and his staff would like to not be able to say anymore. In fact, in the series, Georgia Southern has four. It's a fake, though. And it's going to be close. It looks like enough, though, for the first down off the fake. Well, there's some strategy, and the first gadget play we've seen of this ball game comes from Cal McCombs. That's going to be good enough for a VMI first down on the short snap. A short snap it was, and it caught the defense on their heels. They know that VMI has a good punter. Good fake carried out by Barth there. He's turning running, and the defense bought it right up the middle. They go to get the first down. Aaron Dunlap able to take it across and getting just the yard that was necessary. He got that yard and maybe a half more, and just enough to keep VMI marching with the football now. So the Kedad's looking strong here in this uh, first quarter of a scoreless game. Keeping the Georgia Southern offense off the field, most importantly. Here's a throw, and the double coverage has picked off. And coming back the other way is Joe Scott, the linebacker, with the interception, and he'll take it into VMI territory at about the 40-yard line. So that will end the VMI drive there. A tough throw there by Lyles with double coverage. Joe Scott, the leading tackler on the ball club, not known for his fleet-footed uh, exercise, but a good interception there. So the takeaway for Georgia Southern, they've got the ball when we come back. No score here at VMI. Georgia Southern and VMI scoreless in the first quarter, and each team has turned it over one time, and most recently, Georgia Southern with a takeaway here. Indeed, and Georgia Southern in zone coverage, and then you have Joe Scott who just stepped right in the path of that one. Live action here, and the handoff, Adrian Peterson, the fullback able to get just a couple again this time, pounds down for about four yards. I'm very impressed with the way VMI's defensive line is controlling the trenches, if you will. Peterson has not been able to have much of a hole to break through, and Normally, he can stay on his feet and bounce off of some tackles, but good tackling being done by that defensive front. We haven't had much of an opportunity to talk about AP, the outstanding uh, fullback, Adrian Peterson, but uh, those opportunities are probably coming here. Keeping it down to pitch out. This time it is Weathers taking it for a couple of yards before he's run out of bounds on the near sideline. Adrian Weathers is one who has a great deal of speed, and if Georgia Southern can beat you to the corners, they're going to beat you. They've got great speed, and I think that's one of the keys, certainly for the VMI defense today, is to keep those corners sealed off. And for Weathers, just his sixth carry on the year, had 38 yards on five carries coming into this ball game. As you can imagine, Peterson, the focus of this attack on most occasions, he's got 66 rushing attempts and 400 and 
35 yards rushing. Revere rolling to the right. He's got some running room if he wants it. He'll take it. And takes it down near the 20-yard line. First down, Georgia Southern. J.R. Revere, a two-sport player at Georgia Southern, plays baseball, and certainly on this waggle, the quarterback waggle, you can see he's got plenty of blocking. He's got a big convoy out there. He just cuts up behind a block by Peterson and gets on up in there. He's got good speed, plays the outfield in baseball, covers a lot of real estate there, too. Almost took that for a home run, but instead, take that. Here's a big hole up the middle. Peterson, goal line touchdown. Well, Peterson busts loose on a 21-yard touchdown. He said he'd been quiet on his first couple of carries, but there's Peterson with his first touchdown of the game, his ninth rushing touchdown on the season. There's your patented Peterson run. Watch it. They open the hole, and he sees it plugged inside, goes between the tackle and the guard, and just has people bounce off of him as he goes to the goal line. The quick hitter and the touchdown, so Georgia Southern strikes first here in the first quarter. Scott Shelton on for the point after try now for Georgia Southern on the season. He's converted on 24 of his 25 point after attempts. The snap is down and this kick is up. And it's good for Georgia Southern. So Adrian Peterson breaks through in a big way. BMI had held him in check for a period of time there, but now with 4.05 to play in the first quarter, it's Georgia Southern taking a 7-0 lead at BMI. Peterson, this is what his, his view is like from down low. Goes outside the tackle and just races toward the end zone and bouncing off of tacklers. So Peterson takes it in. And a reminder, following the conclusion of this game, stay tuned for New Mexico and Utah at 3.30 Eastern. UAB at Southern Miss at 7. Following those games, catch a wrap-up of all the day's college football action on ESPN News. CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. In Atlanta 10 action, Villanova and Richmond are all knotted up at seven apiece with 14-21 to go in the second half. Maryland leads West Virginia 7-3 with 14-57 to go in the second half. The BMI will get the ball back here as they get ready to try it again. They've actually been effective in picking up a couple of first downs and moving the football in this game. But the interception by Joe Scott the Georgia Southern linebacker setting up that touchdown drive for Georgia Southern. Cal McCombs talking to his troops on the bench, telling them to keep up the good work. Cal, an excellent defensive mind, too. In his third year here at VMI. Got two wins last year, which was the most they'd had in several years. Here's Titus Green bringing back the kickoff. He's dangerous, and he could break one as he's across the 40, gets to midfield. The kicker slows him down, Shelton, but not until he gets into Georgia Southern territory down at the 44-yard line. Last week, Titus Green had three big returns against Furman. There's his first big break today. That's what we were talking about in the opening. And Titus is going to put his team in good field position. He's got to do just this. And look at the wall, sealing off the middle. He goes to the outside where there's nobody. And Shelton, the kicker, has a good open field stop on him. At least slows him down to where he can get some more white shirts. Good block there. There, That was the initial block there that sprung him. And he's got good speed. He's an exciting guy when he puts his hands on the ball. And I'm surprised Georgia Southern is kicking to him. Last week, Greenhead returns a 53, 48, and 42 yards versus Furman. Josh Lyles in the VMI offense looking to throw, but he's going to get wrapped up and sacked instead. And there's a good job. Jamar Jones. Outside pursuit by Jamar Jones. Initially, Lyles had some time to throw, but the coverage in the secondary was strong, and just when he was about to take it off and run, he's a sack for a three-yard loss. 6'3", 230-pound senior is Jamar Jones, one of the, the fine talents on this Georgia Southern defense, a, a defense that's only allowed 20 points in three ball games this year. Now bring along second down and 13 for VMI. Completion, there's... Pedro Garcia, and he gets it for just a yard or two. Not a big gain there, but uh, we'll move it forward. And uh, on the season, Garcia, eight receptions for 57 yards heading into the ballgame. Averages seven yards a catch. The 6'1", 190 junior. Does a good job to get open. And wisely, Lyle sees that they're open there, and there's not 
too tight a coverage on him, and they can get him. They're going to the sidelines mostly with their passes. Deion Stokes, the cornerback, able to get a piece of the jersey of Garcia to make the initial contact there and slow him down. So a gain of three on the short pass play, and BMI looking at third down and ten now. Again, they'll try to dump it off to Cawthon, who did it earlier on the little inside screen, but this time Georgia Southern ready for it, and Robert LeBlanc able to break it up. LeBlanc was the man that really caused that screen not to work because he held up Cawthon and made Cawthon stay with him because he couldn't shake him. You'll see it on the replay here. Cawthon comes out of the backfield on the screen and cannot get rid of him. Hard to jump over a guy 6'2", 248, <laughs> standing right in the path of the football. Robert LeBlanc, they call him Frenchy. He has a bad foot, he only has a certain number of plays that he can play in a game. I don't know what foot is in French, otherwise I would tell you. It punts away now. Brent Barth gets it away inside the 15 at the 11-yard line. Fair catch signaled there by Anthony Williams. So at least VMI is able to back up Georgia Southern as their offense comes back out. Coach Paul Johnson, four-time National Coach of the Year consecutive. 1997, 98, 99, and 2000. His last two teams have each gone 13-2. and two. They've each won national championships. Ted, as you know, uh, no program has ever won three consecutive one AA national titles in football, but uh, it'd be tough to bet against Paul Johnson's squad. They certainly have an excellent chance. That's the goal that Georgia Southern has up on their boards to try to repeat that uh, performance again this year. So the Eagles with a 7 nothing lead. The throw over the middle, wide open target and spinning ahead across to 35 to the 40 yard line. I believe that's TJ Anderson. And it is Anderson up to the 40, so so much for that hole they were backed up into. Anderson averaging six yards a carry on running. That's his first reception. But you can see plenty of time coming over the middle, wide open. A mix up in the coverage on VMI, I believe. And Anderson doing a good job of using his piads. That's French for feet. Very good. <laughs> I'm told. I'm trusting you. <laughs> Throwing now. Revere, ooh, hit his target. In and out of the hands of Weathers at the 45 of VMI. Caught Weathers in stride, but went right through his hands. Weathers, as well as many of the receivers for Georgia Southern with good speed, and uh, just kind of split the middle on the coverage there. Running a post pattern over the middle was open, but Revere just couldn't quite get it to him. Well, last week, Revere only threw the ball five times, completing four versus Chattanooga for 142 yards and two touchdowns, though, on those four completions. There's the season totals. Eight of 21, three touchdowns, 263 yards, and no interception. On second and 10, Revere's going to throw again. Another target open, and again, it was Anderson. This one a little bit behind him, though, again, about the 45-yard line. This time, Anderson unable to haul it in. Of course, there's been one interception in this game, so now Revere has been intercepted at least once. Now, earlier, Adrian Peterson had the 21-yard touchdown run, and we haven't had a chance to talk about his streak, which is 34 straight regular season and 46 overall games of 100 yards rushing or more. He's never played a collegiate game in which he's not rushed for 100 yards. Peterson gets a chance here, and he'll get a couple across the 40 up to about the 42-yard line. Well, the middle of that defensive line for VMI is just incredible. And they hold on third down and long, and that's going to send out the punting unit. Yeah, get fired up on VMI's defensive side there. They are doing a good job. Ty Summers and company there coming off the field, and the junior uh, doing a good job. The Cadets have to feel proud of what they've done, forcing a punt here on fourth down and seven. He's got Shelton on to kick it away. Under some heavy pressure once again. And returnable. Across the 30. And that's going to be about it. There's a flag on the play, Jim, and they ran into the punter for Georgia Southern, Scott Shelton. And a pretty good acting job by Scott. He went down, and I'm sure they're going to bring that back. It's going to be a roughing the kicker penalty. So Pavogel's return of just a couple of yards uh, may bring it back. Remember, it was fourth down and seven. So yeah, that Robert penalty flag was dropped right back where Shelton was kicking it away. Running into the kicker against the defense. Five-yard foul. Repeat fourth down. So remember, fourth and seven, so a gain of five only, so it still means fourth down and two. You'll see him run into him right there. Couldn't pull up in time. He didn't have to act too much. <laughs> yeah, Shelton didn't have to act too much there. 
but not too damaging. So Scott back to punt it again. So it's going to be John Puvagel, the sophomore, back to return this one. Now his dad works at the Pentagon, but he was off that day uh, when the terrorist attacks hit on the 11th. So his father, Timothy, able to escape because he wasn't there that day. So many stories and connections back to September the 11th. Puvagel back to return this punt. They almost went into him again. Time will not be returnable. Georgia Southern will let it bounce. Pupajo lets it go at about the 20. And just inside the 20-yard line, it lays the rest there, and VMI will get it back this time. And it certainly got a Georgia Southern roll on that one before it was down. So Keydat's going to put their offense back out on the field and see if they can't get something going offensively here. But their defense has played very well against this powerful Georgia Southern offense. And that man right there is going to try to come up with something here that can penetrate that tough VMI defensive wall. Well, and last year, Paul Johnson brought his team up here to VMI, or uh, played them in Statesboro for a 56-3 win. It, really the closest game in the series, which is led by Georgia Southern, 8-0, came in 1996, and that was a three-point win by Georgia Southern, 20-17. But otherwise, it's mostly been blowouts on the side of the Eagles in this 8-0 run versus VMI. Lyles hands it off. Cawthon gets across the 20 and gets a couple up to about the 22-yard line. Good. He has continued to be the focus of this VMI offensive attack today. Ryan Schleski leading the blockers on that particular attempt by Cawthon. Oh, you see we're down inside the final minute of the first quarter. Cadets down by just a score here. So again, about two brings along second down and eight for VMI. And freshman quarterback Josh Lyles will again hand it off to Cawthon, but nothing doing this time. There's Freddie Pescada. We talked about him in the opening here. Best defensive player on the Georgia Southern team. One of the best in all of 1AA and certainly in the Southern Conference as well. Big boy, too. When they get off the bus at a buffet table, you can hear the <laughs> restaurant cringe when they see Freddie coming. 250 pounds, but agile at six foot one. In the final ticks of the uh, first quarter here. And what has been a, a close game. And I don't think VMI will get another playoff before the quarter will end. They'll be happy to take it into the second quarter. And VMI here at home at Alumni Memorial Field in front of the fans here in Lexington, Virginia. Have to feel good about what they're seeing so far. Trailing top-ranked Georgia Southern, but just by the score of 7 to nothing. Quarter two back here in Lexington, Virginia on the campus of VMI. And the Keydets with the football here trailing just 7 nothing here. As we welcome you back, Jim Zoki, along with Ted Byrne. Josh Lyles, the quarterback, keeps it here and is looking to throw. And Kubogo unable to come down with it about the 35-yard line. A little bit behind, but catchable in the coverage there by Deion Stokes. Lyles with a nice play-action fake. And it froze him for a moment, but couldn't quite make connection with the uh, receiver. But Deion Stokes right there to break it up anyway. And that's going to be a long fourth down now for VMI. I'll have to punt it back again. Here Brent Barth comes on for the third time in this game. They faked a punt earlier. I don't think they're going to do that, though, here back inside their 25-yard line. Ah! Fourth down and six. Ooh, Barth gets away. Another good one. Williams gets under it and slides down though, at the 40-yard line, so he'll be down right there on contact with the turf. But Georgia Southern, regardless, still comes up with good field position here. They do indeed have good field position at their own 40-yard line. Williams slipped a little bit on the footing. When we got here at the stadium this morning, there was a little cover of dew on the field, but I have to say that this field is in probably the best shape I've ever seen it at VMI. They were out cutting it yesterday prior to the uh, uh, walkthroughs by both clubs. A great setting for college football in this, this quaint town of Lexington, Virginia. Great place to watch a college football game. Here's Adrian Peterson trying to break another long one. Gets around the corner, keeps his footing. Down the sideline he goes inside the 30, spinning for more. And a penalty flag comes in late as Peterson takes it down to about the 27-yard line. Peterson showing great balance there and great uh, display of footwork along that sideline. And as you can see, or as you saw on the run, he broke the tackles. And oftentimes, Adrian gets downfield on second and third efforts, and his offensive linemen are not even aware that he's anywhere near them, and sometimes a penalty will occur. We'll see what uh, our referee has to say. Illegal block in the back by the offensive team during the run. Spot foul, 10 yards, repeat, first down. Watch this replay, and watch him 
stay in bounds. There's the penalty right there. Derek Owens blocking from the back, but look at the footwork by the sidelines right there and to maintain his balance. That was a tremendous move right there and kept going. And kept going. Both teams, by the way, in the first period with three first downs each. Yeah, pretty evenly matched first quarter, surprisingly so for BMI as they bring up a couple of extra defenders along the line of scrimmage, and it works out well for them. A little bit of a run blitz there and snuffs it out just inside the 40 as Peterson takes it down to the 39-yard line. In the first period of play, BMI has had to punt the ball three times for a 36-yard average, while Georgia Southern has punted the ball twice for a 41-yard average. BMI possessing the ball 10 minutes and 19 seconds of the first quarter. Georgia Southern with only 441 in possession time. Usually those numbers are reversed when Georgia Southern is on the field, although it is a quick strike attack. Sometimes they score quickly in time of possession, not such a factor. And off second man through this time and taking it down is keeping it as the quarterback actually is uh, Revere, and he takes it down inside the 35-yard line. Sort of a game that Georgia Southern fans like to play as they like to keep a running total during the game of how many yards Adrian Peterson has to see how long it'll take him to get to 100. Here you see the fake handoff to Peterson. The keeper by Revere as he gets to the outside. In the first period, Peterson rushed five times for 34 yards. Last year against VMI, 182 yards and five touchdowns. Here he could be off to another one to the 20, breaks a tackle, 15 to the 10. Peterson bowls his way down near the end zone, but pushed out of bounds just short of the pylon. Gets inside the five-yard line, and uh, we have an injured VMI player as Peterson nearly broke off a long touchdown run there. Peterson, a punishing runner, uses the stiff arm about as good as Walter Payton used to for the Chicago Bears. And, of course, Peterson a winner of the Walter Payton Award. You see him coming off of the block there, then bouncing to the outside. Nice switch of the ball to the outside arm. Good look at that. Stiff <laughs> arm there. Still keeps going. Got one more to give right there as he puts his shoulder into Mubangu to try to uh, break from him. But again, injured player on the field, Matt Cluck. And he is going to be helped off the field. Peterson now with 98 yards, eight rushes, one touchdown. And I wouldn't be surprised if Peterson will get the call on here to get a couple of more yards and get over that 100. You see Cluck taking the off the field here as he uh, looks like a lower leg injury, maybe an ankle injury of some kind back of the defensive line. As I mentioned, Peterson, five touchdowns versus VMI and 182 yards versus the key debts in their matchup last year. This time he takes it down inside the three, bringing along first down and goal. Revere's going to roll out, though. Looks like he wants to keep it, and Revere will keep it for the touchdown, but hold on. Penalty flag comes flying in. Flying in from the end zone out to about the four. Wait and see what the call is. I'm sure it will be against Georgia Southern based on where the flag was thrown. Revere uncontested running it into the end zone prior to the penalty flag. Holding during the run by the offense. Ten yard foul from the spot of the flag. First down. Robert Rougeau filling us in on the infraction. Moves the ball back to the VMI 13. Some may say just gives the Eagles more room to operate. So they, Paul Johnson's team comes off the field. Can't be pleased about that penalty. It takes six points off the board. You see him talking over there with Anthony Williams, one of the receivers, after that holding penalty. So as Ted said, it's going to march the ball back from being a touchdown to uh, first and goal at the 13-yard line for Georgia Southern. Bit of a conference going on there with all the officials. Nothing to share with us, though, about what they were chatting about. Always the last to know. Earlier this year, Georgia Southern with victories over Savannah State 69-6 and Delaware 38-7. Last week over Chattanooga 70-7. Here just a 7-0 lead in the second quarter. Handoff, Peterson. BMI, of course, looking for him after a gain of one. He's brought down. And the defense indicating no, no, no. He's not going to do it. David, Darian Lafferty there. Giving that sign. A big bulky young man. On the scoreboard, that's going down as a gain of two to make it second and 11. If that's the case, that's 100 yards even for Peterson, and the streak moves on. Lafferty a walk-on in 1998. Right defensive tackle for the Kedets. So second and goal from the 11-yard line. Coming around left end, Revere keeps it and takes it inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. 
VMI trying to hold on a few more plays here and see if they can at least force a field goal by Georgia Southern. Chris Walsh on the pursuit for VMI. On the fake to Peterson, he drew three red shirts around him as he took a punishing blow while Revered kept it and went to the far left side. Walsh, a junior, 6'3", 225 pounds, and with his tackle brings along third down and goal. Smart player, too, is on the Southern Conference honor roll. Here to throw. Has it batted down at the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring along fourth down. Ty Summers able to knock that pass down from Revere. Remember, Georgia Southern had a touchdown a couple of plays ago, but now they'll have to settle for a field goal try. Watch this. A low trajectory on the ball thrown by J.R. Revere, but a good job of getting his hands up. That's why you tell the defensive lineman, always keep your hands up. I think if he had his hands down, he might have blocked that one with his face mask. That was coming in low. As tall as he is. <laughs> so this will be a 25-yard field goal attempt now by Scott Shelton. He'll do it from the left hash mark. And the kick is on the way, and Shelton's got it through. So Georgia Southern has to settle for three after having the touchdown taken back by a holding penalty. But the Eagles have built their lead to 10-0 here in the second quarter at BMI. Keep up with what's going to be on CSS each day, then the place for you to go is the CSS website at www.css-sports.com. You'll find our weekly schedule there, as well as other information about our network. CSS is your source for sports in the Southeast. And here at VMI, Georgia Southern, thanks to a 25-yard field goal by Scott Shelton, have taken a 10-0 lead over the Cadets. Georgia Southern and Shelton kicking it away now. This will be Titus Green taking it from inside his five-yard line. Following Solomon, gets it across the 20. And the exciting one gets it across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Now he is a handful, and you've got to cover him. He's already had one good run back. And that one not bad as he gets it out to about the 26. And thanks to Green, a 33-yard kick return average on the season. We look at the Georgia Southern scoring drive. 20, 52 yards and eight plays, a 25-yard field goal. Almost three minutes a clock. That's a long possession for Georgia Southern. They usually do them in about a minute and a half. <laughs> Usually a quick strike, but that was a more deliberate drive for the three points. The Kedets come back on, trailing by 10. Josh Lyles, the freshman quarterback. Again, he's going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. The Georgia Southern defense forcing Lyles to do a lot of that today so far. Low snap, but handled. Cawthon, with the misdirection, running back across to about the 35, got nine yards on first down. Last week against Georgia Southern, Chattanooga ran a quarterback sneak, basically, a number of times, and it really gashed the defense for a lot of yards. Obviously, BMI picked up on the film of that, that they had that kind of a success because this is almost a, a similar type of play and blocking and yardage gain. BMI doing a much better job of running the ball than they did last week against Furman where they had only 32 yards rushing as a team. And again, it's going to be Cawthon spinning out of the tackle of Pescada across to the 45, taking it up near midfield. And when you break away from Freddie Pescada, you've done something there, and it's going to be a first down for VMI. And what a great job that offensive front is doing for VMI. I mean, they are opening up gaping holes. Watch the, the play there. There's the pulling guard and the seal off block there by Ed Webb. He did a great job of popping that hole open for Cawthon. Webb at... Uh, the guard, Graham at center. Carlton at the other guard, Brown and Howard at the tackles. Once again, Lyles. Audibleizing. Now with first down and 10, up to the 45. Again, he'll keep it with Cawthon, but this time nothing doing. A lot of pursuit that time by the Georgia Southern defense. And not much running room at all that time. Corey Middlebrooks mm -hmm. in on the tackle, the defensive end for Georgia Southern. They were showing a four-man front, and Middlebrooks, 6'2", 240, got in there on the tackle. Georgia Southern's defense only allowing 6.7 points per game so far in this young season through three games. Here they're pitching a shutout so far against VMI. The cadets have shown the ability to move the football, but uh, haven't come close to scoring yet. On second down and 10, Lyles will throw. Heavy pressure this time by Pescada and company, but the pass completed. Pabujo takes it across the 45, just a couple, gets it up to the 47-yard line. Derek Butler on the stop. The 
weak side linebacker. Watch it from field level here. As the offensive line sees it, you see it. Mosqueda breaking through with a big pressure, but then a nice grab there. And the spin down by Butler. Bojo came into the ballgame with six receptions for 48 yards. A couple receptions now in this ballgame. And Lyles, the freshman, has looked pretty solid so far. Last week, making his first start against Furman, he was 15 of 29, passing for 102 yards. Lyles with a three-step drop, fires. He's got an open man complete. Solomon's got it inside the 35-yard line, down to the 31. What a good job Solomon did of shielding that ball with his body in order to make that catch as the ball was really going away from him and his momentum. But a good mid-air correction. Nice blocking there by the offensive line. See Cawthon sneaking out of the backfield, but look at that, the way he goes up and grabs that ball and just pulls it right down for the reception. Kevin Solomon. James Young coming over on the coverage, the uh, freshman free safety for Georgia Southern, but another first down for the Cadets here. This time they fake it to Cawthon, and not. Now Titus is hitting the backfield, and yeah, he's going to be spun down with a loss of a couple of yards. As that time, it was David Young helping to break up the play and a loss of about four yards that time. And it could have been a worse loss than it started out to be as Young hit him, but kind of bounced off of him. Let's look at it from field level here. There's the fake, the roll, no, not much deception there, completes it there, and you see Young kind of spin off of him a little bit. He was able to keep his feet before he got rolled out of bounds there. Some other scores, Richmond leads Villanova 10 to seven. Delaware leads Northeastern 7-6. This will bring along second and 13 after the loss of three. And that time when the offensive lineman lost his footing, that was Skip Carlton starting to rotate back and just kind of trip trying to hold his balance. Virginia Tech ranked number eight this week in the AP poll. Leads uh, Central Florida 10-7 with 2.36 to go in the second quarter. It was a dead ball foul prior to the snap. False start by an offensive lineman. Penalized five yards. Repeat second down. You get those 270 pounds moving backwards, it's hard to stop that train. Indeed it is. Skip Carlton was the man that couldn't freeze. Key Dutch look at their uh, new unis there, by the way, this season. The, uh, some of the players helping to redesign the look, a little moderate change to uh, what it's been traditionally here. So second down and 20 upcoming now. Fake the handoff to Cawthon. Lyles throwing and almost picked off, broken up that time as Deion Stokes steps in front of the intended receiver. And trying to get open was that was John Puvogel. He caught three passes against Georgia Southern last year. I know he'd like to do that here, but a good block there, keeping protection for the quarterback, and almost intercepted, but knocked away at the last moment. So good timing by the sophomore there, bring along third down and 20 for VMI. As you can see, 8.41 to play here in the second quarter. Georgia Southern leads with an Adrian Peterson 21-yard touchdown run and a Scott Shelton 25-yard field goal for that 10-0 lead. Lyles on the long count, hands it off. Cawthon will just get a couple. There's Pescada able to bring him down after a gain of two or three, and that'll bring along fourth down now for the Kedets. So the Kedets will have to punt. Brent Barth probably going to look to try to pooch one down and keep Georgia Southern deep in their own territory here. And as uh, Ted mentioned earlier, Barth, fine punter, second team all Southern Conference a year ago. A season which included a 73-yard punt versus Appalachian State last year. He's got a strong leg. It was 13th nationally last year in punting. And uh, it'll be Anthony Williams awaiting the punt back at about his own 10-yard line. Barth drops it, though. He'll try to get away, but nothing doing. That ball is loose, and it's still kicked loose. Young is down there trying to get it. A couple of key debts fall on it, but Georgia Southern's going to come up with a big special teams play here. And last week, VMI struggled with this sort of thing. They had two punts blocked, and here the dropped ball, and it's going to be great field position for Georgia Southern. Certainly not what VMI wanted here, and it's a, not a bad snap. It's right into the hands, a little high maybe, but I think he took his 
eye off the ball and then just tried to do the old uh, Gero, your running kick. Gero, your premium <laughs> running kick. Hope he sticks to making ties. And Georgia Southern, I'm sure, will be told when they look at this film, just fall on the ball, just fall on it, as they were trying to pick it up. And from the Gary, your premium reference, we go to the Dave Casper, Oakland Raiders, Holy Road Rollers uh, reference. That's there right. is, they just rolled that ball up the field. Uh, but they come up with great field position down at the 31 of VMI. And there is not the way to start the drive, though. On the center to quarterback exchange, Revere has to fall on it. Something that doesn't happen very often. But Revere did fall on it. So you can see Georgia Southern with the American flag as well as the NCAA emblem on the back of their helmets there. Mm -hmm. Many teams have taken to wearing the American flag somewhere on their uniforms. I hope they just keep it there. Just make that a permanent part of the uniform, all sports. Thrown a little bit low and behind, and that's going to be incomplete as the intended receiver was Kevin Davis, the slot back. And part of the reason that it was hurried was because of great, great pressure by the VMI defense. And following the, uh, the muffed, fumbled center quarterback exchange and an incomplete pass, it's third down and 10 now for Georgia Southern. Trying to take advantage of this great field position and leading 10-0. Georgia Southern outscoring their opponents 177 to 20 through three games this year. Revere back to throw, under pressure. High in the air, can Summers track it down at the 25? No, but great heat coming in that time. And just able to get the ball away was Revere, but he was certainly feeling the sting of Derek Screen, the sophomore coming in who pounded him just as that football was released. S Screen and Stiltner got to him and made a VMI sandwich out of him. As you'll watch right here, there is Screen. He popped him from the front, and the ball is just up for grabs. Summers trying to track it down with a nearer interception, and again, another look at the pressure coming against Revere. Wham. From the blind side right underneath the arm. This will be a 49-yard field goal try by Scott Shelton. He's got a lot of leg on it. It's going to be close, but it's going to be wide to the left. No good. Well, not many kickers can even try from that uh, distance, but that was a good try. Shelton one for two, now one for three from that distance for Georgia Southern. So again, VMI has got to be excited as momentum is on their side. They're down by just 10, seven minutes remaining in quarter two in Lexington. Remember Shoney's. VMI playing competitive football here in the first half in Lexington. They've started their season 0-3, but here against number one Georgia Southern. The heavy underdogs are down by just 10 points as we get back to live action now. Keeping it, the quarterback rolling to the far side for just a couple of yards. It's a change of quarterback. Dave Poldiak coming in for that play. The 6'2", 195-pound sophomore. And his numbers on the season, 12 of 18 passing for 94 yards and just one pick. And uh, showed good speed getting to the outside there. Trying to generate something on offense. The defense for VMI clicking very well. Poldiak played in the second half of VMI's game versus Furman a week ago. Gains three yards on first down to bring along second down and seven. A couple more defenders come up to the line of scrimmage for Georgia Southern. Little flare out, here is Titus Green coming around the near sideline, but not getting very far at the 35 will be pushed back. While Georgia sh Southern was showing blitz up the middle, they still had the corners covered very well. James Young and David Young out there on the corner to thwart that attempt by VMI. Gain of about maybe a yard or so to bring along third down and six is another look at this uh, carry by Green. Quickly throwing it out. David Young met him first and then James Young right there on top of him. Well, if you're VMI, you want to get the ball into the hands of Titus Green as much as you can. We've seen him uh, very exciting on kick returns. He's easily the fastest player on the Kedet squad. That's a safe pass play there. He only carried the ball coming into this ball game three times. If they're going to use him. It's mostly on the short passes like that. Poldiak throws again to Green. Trying to break out of a tackle, but nothing doing. He's pounded by Joe Scott and knocked backwards. Joe Scott really put the pop on him there. A couple of other Georgia Southern defenders slowed him down. Watch it from field level here. Going to pop it out to the left side. And not much real estate for Green to run there. Jukes one guy out of his feet, and then it's hit and nailed. 
juked and then hit by a cement mixer. It's tough to throw against Georgia Southern. They're allowing only 90 yards per game through the air, which is fourth in the nation. So again, Barthon to punt it away for VMI. This time he handles it and gets it away, and he makes a good punt out of it. This is Williams back at his own 20, comes straight ahead with the football, got some running room, and will carry it almost to the 40-yard line, a return of nearly 20 yards. Good job of handling that punt, kind of a knuckleball that he had to catch on the run, and Williams advances it up to the 40, so Georgia Southern again starting a good field position. So Anthony Williams, who had a 74-yard punt return versus Chattanooga last week, does well there. 4.31 to play in the second quarter. Georgia Southern leads by 10. Look at Ted Burns' summer home here in Lexington, Virginia. <laughs> Not far from the campus of VMI in Lexington. That's, a, that's nice. I like how you got the yard done, too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you did that this morning before the game. Here's a yes. pitch out Weathers. He's got some running room and a first down on first down. He carries for about 11 yards. This is beautiful country up here. Lots of uh, very picturesque type things to look at. But uh, I'm sure the VMI defense would rather not look at that young man run the ball. There's a beautiful shot, and that's uh, House Mountain over now there. Now, that's your backyard, right? Yeah, that's, that's okay, the backyard. That's, that's the back 40. That's the House Mountain in the uh, <laughs> background there, which is a landmark in this part of the country. Ted does well. Hand off Peterson. <laughs> VMI looking for him up the middle, though, after a gain of about two. but. Uh, Peterson appears to be safely over 100 yards in this game, which would now make all 47 of his collegiate games, counting playoff games, and 35 straight regular season games, which matches the uh, mark of R.J. Bowers, who played at Grove City, and uh, that would tie an NCAA All-Divisions record. No doubt about it. George Southern averaging about six yards of play VMI, just over two. And Weathers comes in motion. This time, Revere keeps it and stumbles ahead for a couple. Gets it down inside the VMI 45-yard line before he's wrapped up and dropped there. Ryan Cates among those in on the tackle. Chris Walsh, really the man who sort of turned that up, if you will, and created the problem for Georgia Southern and that defensive play. And we see Darren, or Darren Lafferty, rather, the 6'6", 255-pound junior. That leads to third down and six now for Georgia Southern. And off inside, Peterson just bowling his way down near the first down. This could come down to a measurement. They needed six. Peterson fell forward for about six yards. He is so strong when he runs the ball. Adrian averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry. So if he gets his average, they've got the first. Peterson, a very quiet young man before a ball game, loves to put the headphones on and just listen to some of his music. Sort of gets him in the mood. It's not enough for the first down. Though. Now about a half a yard short, so the Eagles will go for it on fourth down. And who else but Peterson and just muscling his way over the top. Defender hanging on him, but he just pulls his way across the 44 down to the 43-yard line, and the Georgia Southern drive will continue. Walsh there to meet him head up in the hole, but Peterson with the momentum just pushed Walsh and himself enough for the first down and puts the ball inside the 43 of VMI. Watch the hole there. Nice job by the center. And then right there, he turns and spins and just pushes his way, bowls his way over. This time a throw on the fake. Revere hangs it up high down near the end zone. Broken up, nice play down near the goal line. And a fine play by VMI as Mubango was able to knock it down. And great recovery by Mubangu as uh, wide open was the receiver. As you'll see on the replay, he was wide open in the, toward the uh, corner uh, near the end zone, just on a fly pattern, and great recovery there. Defi Mubangu. Great name, too. Yes. Fun to say. On the all-name team. All-name team, absolutely. So a long incompletion leads to second down and 10. Revere, counterplay coming back. Near side has some running room at the 30. Cuts it to the sideline and is wrapped up and dropped finally at the 15-yard line. Finally, Gabe Hensley able to get a hand on him and bring him down. Revere showing his speed and his great feet there. Watch it on the ground with us as he makes the fake there and comes to the outside. He's got that convoy with him. But really, they aren't much help to him. He does a lot of this on his own. Revere, kind of a BYOB, be your own blocker on this one. So that's what that means. Yes. <laughs> I've heard that. Under two minutes to go in the first half. The referee stepping in here. 
Ball just inside the 15-yard line. Georgia Southern leading 10-0, looking for more. And Calling a timeout. Time First charge, timeout, VMI. The Cadets looking to get this ball back. That's the first timeout used by VMI. Georgia Southern still has all three of their timeouts remaining here. And a tough stretch for VMI. They, they played fourth-ranked Furman last week, losing 65-7. to seven, And now they play number one-ranked Georgia Southern here today, but so far holding their own, Ted, just down 10-0. No doubt about it. Tennessee fans, tune in to CSS Monday night at 7 Eastern for an entire evening of volunteer football. At 7, it's the Philip Fulmer Show, followed by the re-air of 14th-ranked LSU at number 8 Tennessee. That coming up at 8 o'clock. Then at 11, watch classic Tennessee football on Vintage Orange right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. 10-0 our score here, 148 to play. Look at Coach Paul Johnson's team. And they do well everywhere, but even on the road. In the Southern Conference all time, they are 20 and 12 in conference road games, and they've won 11 of their last 13 road games in Southern Conference play as well. And I'm sure around the country, as they're looking at this score right now with a minute 48 to go in the first half, many people are scratching their head thinking, why is Georgia Southern only ahead 10-0 against VMI? Mainly because VMI's defense is just playing outstanding. But the Eagles looking for more. Adrian Peterson inside the 10. There's that famous stiff arm. He pushes his way across for a 15-yard touchdown. And just like that, another score for Peterson, his second of the day. Adrian Peterson, tough to stop in the open field. If you can't plug up that hole, that initial hole that he has to go through, and you'll see VMI did a great job of getting there, but the offensive line on the crisscross block there sprung it open. And... Uh, Leonard Daggett really springing the hole, and then Peterson with a stiff arm, and then racing toward the corner and giving six more points for Georgia Southern. Defi Mubangu, the recipient of that, Adrian Peterson stiff arm, and he does it as well as that little trophy, the Heisman guy does it. And of course, many people looking to see if Peterson might have a chance at winning that award. Dark Horse candidate only because of it being one double A, the extra point up and on the way, and good by Scott Shelton. That gives Georgia Southern a 17-0 lead, so a little bit more comfortable now for the Eagles. And uh, Adrian Peterson, again, a look at his touchdown run. Revere turns, hands it to him, says, AP, have at it. And AP gets to the sidelines, makes the stiff arm, and says, bye-bye. Heads for the corner. Six more points for Georgia Southern. Jim, other games in the Southern Conference today include Appalachian State hosting East Tennessee State. The Citadel will host South Carolina State. Western Carolina will host Furman. Chattanooga will host Walford Thursday night right here on CSS. East Tennessee State and the Citadel coming up uh, at uh, Thursday night. Peterson with two touchdowns in this game now has 10 on the season. Of course, all of them on the ground and uh, well over 100 yards rushing here in the first half. All the full stats rundown for you coming up at halftime here. A 17-0 Eagles lead now, and Peterson just keeps going week after week. VMI used that timeout to save some time, so they'll have about a minute 40 or so here as we get back. Shelton kicks it away. Sweet Titus Green inside his five. He'll bring it ahead from the two-yard line. Had one long return earlier. Looks for another one here, and he's got it. The 30, at the 40, tries his own stiff arm before he's run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. So a second long kickoff return in this game for Titus Green, who had three very long returns last week versus Furman. And Kevin Davis was the man who really hemmed him in toward the sideline to keep this one from going all the way, the redshirt freshman. As you see, Titus cutting it back up. Now he'll zip to the outside, breaks the tackle there. And here comes Davis in pursuit, closing the angle toward the sideline, and a stiff arm got him about four or five more yards. Great run. Look at the feet. Look at the balance as he goes. Getting to the outside, switches that ball yep. like he's supposed to, has the nose of it protected, gives that stiff arm, and then gets shoved out of bounds. Textbook run, great speed by Titus Green, gives good field position to Poldiak and the VMI offense. Pivogel gets the ball. He's run out of bounds, which will stop the clock across midfield into Georgia Southern territory at about the 48-yard line. Deion Stokes on the coverage defensively for Georgia Southern, running him out of bounds. Now, and again, keep in mind that VMI has never scored on Georgia Southern on their home turf. And with a minute 24, right before halftime, trailing 17-0. I know VMI would love to get in 
to the end zone to go into the locker room. Yeah, three games, three shutouts here by the Eagles defense. Second down and three. Be a handoff. Coffin's going to be right near that first down marker as he takes it down inside the Georgia Southern 45-yard line. And a timeout called by VMI. I get a referee's measurement here maybe with a minute 16 to go in the first half. There's Coach McComb's son in the middle of your screen who is working as hard as he can for dad. That's Will McCombs, graduated from the Air Force in 94. This is his third season. There's dad proud of him. And they will measure for the first down here for VMI, which stops the clock with a minute 16 remaining in the first half in Lexington. Will McCombs, by the way, is coached at three military schools, Air Force Prep, the Citadel, and VMI. Not much unlike his dad from the Air Force at 15 seasons, 13 years at the Citadel, and now in his third season here at VMI is Cal McCombs. Just a little bit short, though, a few inches. See how the locals here react. So VMI will be looking at third down and inches here with a minute 16 to play in the first half. I would think, though, if need be, this is two down territory for the Kedets, looking to get on the scoreboard down by 17 points. Poldiak last week, 11 of 16 off the bench versus Furman. He threw for 89 yards for VMI as they make some late substitutions now, trying to catch Georgia Southern in the wrong defense. Power alignment here. The handoff caught and separated from the football. Loose and looks like Georgia Southern may come up with it. But Coffin was just splattered on that handoff, and Georgia Southern's got the fumble recovery. Corey Middlebrooks comes out with the big skin, and it popped out. Let's look at it from ground level. You'll almost feel the hit as soon as he gets it. Comes to the outside. Oh, he lost it before the hit, yeah. He did lose it before the hit, and then it kind of got kicked up into the air. David Young is the man that hit him, but that ball was loose before Young actually got to him, and then... Middlebrooks fell on it right away. Never really did get a good exchange there. So the second turnover in this game now for VMI. Peterson takes the handoff. He'll push his way for a yard or two, and that'll be it. Timeout here with 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Timeout. Georgia Southern, their first charge timeout. So obviously, uh, Coach Paul Johnson, Adrian Peterson and company not satisfied with a 17-0 lead and 124 yards rushing in the first half uh, for Peterson here, doing it on just 14 carries. I know that Paul Johnson would like to have gotten this game maybe a little more out of hand so he would be able to rest Peterson in part of the second half, but with uh, 14 carries, 124 yards, and just a 17-0 lead against VMI playing as toughly as they are, sure we will see Peterson in the second half. Now coming into this game, Peterson was just, I say just because of his ability, 199 yards from 8,000 yards rushing in his career. So depending on how long he stays on the field here, could eclipse 8,000 career yards in this ball game today. You know, there are a lot of tough places in the United States to play, but when you get a core of cadets mm -hmm. who have to be at every game and they get enthusiastic, this is the first time during the week they've had a chance to kind of get out and get loose. They really get to into a football game here at VMI. And their team's giving them plenty to cheer about. It doesn't reflect so much on the scoreboard, but uh, hanging in there, 17-0. Here's a completion and a chance for a big play and taking it down to the 30-yard line. And another first down is Derek Owens off the reception. Owens wide open there, catching the VMI defensive secondary off guard there. You'll watch him as Owens goes right to the sidelines on the pattern. Sarkey will lose his footing in the coverage. A little slip there, couldn't recover, and Owens wide open to take it upfield. So down about the 31 and a half yard line with 44 seconds to go. Georgia Southern marching here and looking for more. Revere with the rollout. He can run if he wants. He's got some space. He steps out of bounds at the 25 yard line before he's chased out of bounds by Derek Screen. Wise decision there. Keeping the ball and just running it upfield and stepping out of bounds, stopping the clock. 35 seconds left. Not bad field position to go. 
A lot of teams up 17 with the ball on their own side of the field, but they probably just ran out the clock, but not Georgia Southern when you can rack up the points and totals they put up every week, averaging 505 yards per game to lead the Southern Conference in overall offense. Keeping it, Revere, pitch now. And getting a couple there is T.J. Anderson takes it down inside the 20. They'll mark him down at the 18-yard line. He averages six yards a carry. Definitely got the first down there. And another timeout call, trying to preserve as much clock as they can. Would like the touchdown, but they've got Shelton timeout. available for a field goal try if need be. T.J. Anderson, 5'11", 180, a redshirt freshman for Georgia Southern. And there you see Paul Johnson talking with Derek Owens, the six-foot junior. Johnson with the highest winning percentage in Southern Conference history. 86.2% of his games have been victories. 53-8 and eight since becoming head coach of this program. And what a tradition to carry on. They've won five of the eight league titles since rejoining in 1993. And Redmond Combs, this team won two games last year. That was a step up because they had won one the year before, none the year before. A tough rebuilding program here for McCombs, but we've seen it in this ball game today, Ted. Their offense is getting on track, and he's brought a lot of excitement to that side of the football here. Well, certainly losing Joey Gibson has been a big blow to this offense as they kind of revamp things to, to, to center around him. And they miss him, and they miss his athletic ability that he brings to the quarterback position. And you'll see him right there on the sidelines wearing that jersey. And very much into this ball game as a spectator. Gibson, great numbers with 232 yards and 26 completions, only two interceptions. And uh, Gibson has had trouble with injuries in his career. They hope to get him back next week. Here's the second fumbled quarterback center exchange, and this time it's going to be a turnover as VMI falls on the football on another mistake. Ty Summers coming up with the loose football. So each team has now turned it over two times here in the first half of action, and that's going to possibly cost Georgia Southern some points here. Watch Summers, the inside linebacker, the junior, come up with a loose ball. It just popped right out of J.R. Revere's hands, and Summers just popped right on top of it. Adam Brandkamp in there as well, and so VMI with just 24 ticks and deep in their own territory come back out on offense here. Poldiak will continue as the quarterback. 6'2", 195-pound sophomore. Probably won't want to get too cute here. Deep in their own territory, they'll just simply kneel down. At the half, Richmond leads Villanova 10-7. Delaware leads Northeastern at the half 7-6. New Hampshire leads William & Mary at the end of one quarter 7-3. And we have reached halftime here in Lexington, Virginia. Georgia Southern has been blowing out all of their opponents so far this season, but they're caught in a relatively tight game here at VMI through the first half of this football game. As you see the Eagles heading off to the sidelines here and enjoying a 17-0 lead. Halftime on the way next as we continue from Lexington, Virginia, Southern Conference football action. And Georgia Southern top ranked in the country, leading at VMI 17-0. Georgia Southern has yet to give up a point to VMI in their previous encounters here in Lexington and so far through a half of football. That's the story again here as we look at uh, Ted Burns' other summer villa. <laughs> the farmhouse. There, yeah, the old Ponderosa. That's it. Doing That's well it. out there. So 17 nothing our score here as Georgia Southern 3-0 leads 0-3 uh, VMI. And we check out some of the other 1AA college football scores. Richmond leads Villanova at halftime 10-7. Another 1AA games around the country. Delaware, a team that Georgia Southern beat, is leading Northwestern 7-6 right now at halftime. In the second quarter, New Hampshire leads William & Mary 7-3. Again, these are some 1AA scores. A non-1AA game, Purdue and Minnesota at halftime are all knotted up at 14 each. Halftime, it's Northwestern leading Michigan State 17-14. In the second quarter, Oklahoma leading Kansas State 21-14. And Virginia Tech leading University of Central Florida, a team that made a, a jump from 1AA to Division I, 19-7. Nebraska leading Missouri in the second quarter, 7-3. And here's a real tight one. South Carolina trailing Alabama 13-10 in the second quarter. Alabama. 
I saw a lot of the Blacksburg fans uh, at Virginia Tech heading to Blacksburg. Uh, my trip over here to Lexington, Virginia. Paul Johnson's got his Georgia Southern team uh, back out of the locker room here with a 17-0 lead. But uh, Ted, as we said before, it, it could be a bigger lead. They've made some miscues here in the first half. Paul Johnson, I'm sure, feeling that way and had a bit of uh, knowledge to impart to the officials as he was coming off of the field. The big question up in the press box here at, during halftime was what was Paul Johnson talking to the officials about? He was rather animated, and uh, I'm sure that he, you know, as a coach, you see holding calls that don't get made, and you never do see the ones that do get made. But at any rate, <laughs> those, are, those I'm sure were some of the conversation being held. There's again a beautiful shot there of the campus. Coach Cal McCombs have to be, even though he trails 17 0 and you don't like being behind on the scoreboard, has to feel good about the way his team has played here in the first half. Last year, as we said, uh, they lost this contest 56 3 in Statesboro, Georgia. So, so far, anyhow, uh, a pretty solid performance here by VMI, which ended a 32 game losing streak in conference play last year by beating the Citadel late in the season. So, Cal McCombs trying to uh, turn this program around. It's not going to be an easy thing. Thing. It's not going to be something that happens in a short period of time, but uh, certainly he's brought back a lot more excitement here. And if you program. know anything about Cal McCombs, you know that you shouldn't be too surprised about the way this defense is playing simply because Cal was a great mastermind of defense in the years that he was coaching at the Citadel. And uh, certainly defense is something that uh, he's very, very well aware of. There's the Rue. Kangaroo, uh, another mascot used by the Key Dets, uh, Akron Zips. Uh, another one that uses that. Good bit of trivia, Ted. How about that? <laughs> uses a bit of uh, of the, the roo kangaroo. For, yeah, for their mascot. Now the roo got in trouble during basketball season, uh, during a game. In fact, he was he was scolded by the uh, Southern Conference. He pulled a basketball player's shorts down during the warm up, right before the jump, uh, and the jump circle, and uh, was uh, was gotten a little bit of trouble. But I see he's got it. He's got a guard with him now, and he. He's under control today. He looks very good. Looks like they taped his mouth down a little bit there as well. From yes, the yes. So he seems to be in good shape. A little today. less animated than during basketball season, <laughs> which is good for uh, everyone involved here. So we're about ready for the second half of football here as uh, VMI will be kicking it off. Matt Maxey will be uh, kicking it off here to Georgia Southern. And a look there at uh, Kevin Davis, freshman slot back, back to receive this kickoff for the Eagles who lead 17 to nothing. Matt Maxey ready to get the second half underway here in Lexington, Virginia. And so are we as we continue with our Southern Conference football game. A deep kickoff by Maxey, about three yards deep, but coming out of it from the end zone is Davis, and probably the poor decision. He only gets it to the 16-yard line. And the rule of thumb is if you can't get it past the 20, take a knee. And so Georgia Southern will start first and 10 from their own 15-yard line. As Davis comes off here, and... Uh, as you mentioned, Paul, or rather J.R. Revere, because I'm Paul Revere, they have that ride uh, through town. He's uh, made a few mistakes here in the first half of this football game and uh, overall played well. Also had a touchdown called back that he ran in that uh, ended up uh, resulting in a field goal for Georgia Southern in the first half. Averaging about four yards a carry. Pitch it out this time, though. And a nice run up to the 35-yard line. T.J. Anderson takes it up. And a good carry there on first down. Anderson, a red shirt freshman, slot back, who they are really, really pleased with and who's playing his way more and more into a starting position. 5'11", 180. It's at 35, the 25 actually here, and they'll bring along another first down as they move the chains. For Georgia Southern, and they run the ball like nobody else in the Southern Conference, obviously. And off Peterson and... Uh, Again, he'll, he'll be stopped a couple of times. VMI will hang in there and stop him after a yard or two, but it's the long ones that he breaks off and uh, the two touchdowns resulting plus one other long run in the first half that are hard to contain. Well, the offensive line can open many, many holes, and they can't do it on every play, even though they're all designed to be that way. And Peterson just picks the right time to find those open holes. Georgia Southern has outrushed their opponents 60 of their last 61 games. Revere hit from behind and dropped as he tried to run the option there, but nothing doing as Adam Brandkamp, the sophomore, brought him down. Brandkamp, 6'3", 245, the sophomore. Good job as on the backside pursuit. Caught Revere by surprise from the back. There you see right there. And somebody had blocked him, but Brandkamp, fighting off the block, made the tackle. 
Got him down by the heel there. 6'3", 240 pound sophomore is Adam Brandkamp. And that brings long third down and long for Georgia Southern. Third down and 11, Revere to throw with a pump fake. Under heavy pressure, runs out of it. Let's it fly as the defender falls down, but an incomplete pass. Not able to hang on to it was Carl Kearney. If he would have, it would have been a big play for Georgia Southern. For a moment, he had his hands on it, but lost it when he hit the deck. So the incomplete pass stops the clock, 13-22, and forces Georgia Southern to punt. Shelton looking straight into the sun to kick this one. And it'll be the dangerous one back to return it. Titus Green, who's had a couple of long kickoff returns in this game. We'll see how he does here on the punt return. Shelton gathers and gets the punt away as a high floating kick. And a late fair catch signal for and taken at the 35-yard line by Titus Green. So good job by the VMI defense. Their first time back out. They hold uh, Georgia Southern pretty well in check. And good field position now coming up for the Kedets on offense. Looks like we'll see Poldiak coming back on as the quarterback. He came on in relief in the first half for Josh Lyles, the freshman. He was definitely moving the club very well toward the end of the first half. So here he is, number 19, Dave Poldiak. And his numbers in the first half, not too bad. Jimmy, you know, he, got, passing. he got his first college start against Georgia Southern last year. He came on in relief last week in the game versus Furman. Three of three passing, only 10 yards through the air, though, for Poldiak in the first half. Lyles in the first half, seven of 13 passing. It's going to be a handoff here, and this was much of the offense in the first half. They go back to old reliable Dean Coffin, who takes it ahead and gets about 10 yards. Cawthon just using great judgment, starting to his left, cutting back to his right. We'll look at it from down low. You can see him running right at you. Starts that way, now cuts back. Great hole there. Fights off one defender, keeps going, takes three more white shirts to bring him down. So a gain of about 11. That'll give uh, Cawthon 65 yards rushing in this game. He had 54 yards in the first half on 15 carries. Cawthon again, this time. Nothing, literally, as he gets dropped at the line of scrimmage. Freddie Pescada saw him come and wrapped him up like a nice little package and put him down. Pescada does that to a lot of people, though. 64 yards total on the day for Gene Cawthon. 17 rushes. As we told you in the opening, he had 154 yards against Duquesne. If he could duplicate that effort today, it would certainly uh, help VMI at least get him on the board. Again, VMI has moved the ball relatively well in this game. They just haven't threatened to score yet, though. Now looking at second down and 10. Pitch it forward. Cawthon again hit near the line of scrimmage and dropped there. He might get one yard. Jamar Jones almost the recipient of the shuttle pass as he was right on top of the recipient of the pass and brought him down right away. Defensive front line of Georgia Southern uh, anchored by Jamar Jones and Freddie Pescada. It's tough to get much on the ground versus them. Georgia Southern's defense has actually outscored their opponent's offense in the first three games of this season. The defense has scored 24 points. They've only allowed 20 points. Not many defenses can say that. Nope. Of course, if you get a quick start, sometimes that helps too. A little overzealous along the uh, defensive end position is jumping across was Michael Youngblood. Michael Youngblood got across, didn't touch anybody, but then scampered back. No contact was made. See Jack McElwee explaining what he saw from his side of the field. Encroachment on the defense. Five-yard foul. Repeat third down. So that gives VMI the ball. Five yards closer to their goal of the first. It takes them across midfield now, which not many teams get a chance to do versus Georgia Southern. We talked so much about their offense, but they do have an outstanding defense, as we talked about. They forced 11 punts in their win over Chattanooga last Saturday. So third down and three now for BMI. Ball at the Georgia Southern 46-yard line. Give again to Cawthon, spinning ahead. He gets first down for the Kedets. Cawthon will sleep good tonight as he's getting a number of carries and they're hard-fought yards. 
You mentioned that 154 yards he had versus Duquesne. That was the most in the game for VMI since 1996. Thomas Haskins, a former great running back here, uh, the last to rush for that many yards. So chains move, first down and 10 for Dave Poldiak and the VMI offense. Working exclusively out of the shotgun. Cawthon will take it down for a yard or two at about the 40-yard line. Shortens the game as well. The clock continues to move as VMI keeps it mostly on the ground here, running the run and shoot, but uh, having good success in running the football more than throwing it, even though they're a team that throws more than anybody else within conference play. Joe Scott, the leading tackler on Georgia Southern's team. We talk a lot about Freddie Pescada. Mm -hmm. Freddie does a lot to wreak havoc to the play, and Joe likes to come in and make the tackles. And he had the big play with the interception in the first half of this game today, which stopped a VMI drive. Poldiak, heavy pressure, and he's going to go down for the sack. Youngblood came in from the near side, but he had plenty of help. Michael Ward coming in from the backside to bring him down. Showing an outside blitz on that play. And you'll watch him wrap him up and throw him down. Poliak has no choice but to eat the ball as he's got two converging on him. And Jamar Jones was just standing there to make sure it worked. Just in case that ball came loose, <laughs> Jones was ready for the highlight reel. Loss takes it back to third down and 15 now. Going to swing it out. And now Green throws it deep. Cooper Jones got it down inside the 10 yard line. How about that for trickery from Kyle McCombs? What a great play by VMI, and it's the second time they tried to pull it off. The Georgia Southern defense thwarted the first attempt of that play, but you'll see Luvogo get wide open. They throw to the left side, and then a nice sling, if you will, by right to the arms there of Puvogel. Green, we've seen him do it all today on special teams with the kick returns. Offensively as a receiver, he's got a good arm on the uh, lateral and the throw. So that takes the ball down to the seven yard line. First down and goal, and Poldiak wants to call a timeout. Don't want to mess timeout. up this good field position by having the wrong VMI. alignment out there. Their first charge well, and again, out. when you, you think that VMI has not scored on Georgia Southern on this home field, you know they want to take advantage of this. VMI knocking out the door. We'll be back after this. Georgia Southern leads VMI 17 to nothing. Now VMI has never scored against Georgia Southern in the home game here, but they're very close down to the seven yard line. And here's how they got there. Here's a nice play. The lateral out on the side and then the fling by Green all the way down to Puvogel and he was wide open. You know he had to be thinking, oh, let me catch this ball. And he did, good job. Had to wait for it a little bit. But Dave Poldiak has got the VMI offense ready to go on first and goal from the seven-yard line of Georgia Southern. It's going to be a handoff to Coffin. Tries to get around the left end, but nothing doing. Pulled down from behind by Michael Ward after a gain of maybe two. Tried the misdirection. Tried to flood the right zone and then let him sprint to the corner on the left. But again, that right side of the defensive line for Georgia Southern. James Young along there with Michael Ward in there to stop that. This field really tightens up down here in the red zone when you get close on in now at the five yard line on second down. As we mentioned, uh, Georgia Southern allowing less than a touchdown per game, only 6.7 points per game so far this season. The backs line up in the eye. Coming around the left end. Solomon down to the goal line, touchdown! So Kevin Solomon from five yards out takes it in and VMI has finally scored on their home turf against Georgia Southern. And the freshman will flood the track. Nice misdirection. Sending him back to the left side, giving it to him, and letting him go one-on-one -on, -one on the corner, Deion Stokes. So reason to celebrate here at VMI as they are on the scoreboard here in the third quarter. Matt Sharp on for the point after try. Brent Barth will hold. Snap is down, and the kick is on the way, and it is good. Here come the push-ups on the sidelines as VMI has drawn to within 10 of Georgia Southern with 8.28 to play in the third quarter. So a good drive and a big play on the lateral and pass from Titus Green. VMI scores, trail by 10 at home versus Georgia Southern. 
VMI hits pay dirt in the third quarter. Here's how it happened. Great misdirection. Oleak with the snap, the fake, the handoff on the end around to Solomon, and one on one against Deion Stokes and fights his way across the painted stripe for six. And here, seven of them, guys. You ready? Go. There you go. Needs seven of them. Wait a minute. You, you're not doing it right. Chest touching. You gotta go all the way down. Well, look, let's see Ted do seven push-ups. I did. For all earlier. your uh, directing there. Yes. Look at the scoring drive. Nine plays, 64 yards, and eight up some clock. Four minutes and 46 seconds, all leading to the five-yard touchdown run by Kevin Solomon. So now VMI set to kick it off. Dave is back again for Georgia Southern. A 10 point ball game. Uh, Ted, this score is going to raise some eyebrows around the league here in the third quarter. A 10 point deficit. No doubt about it. But Georgia Southern has the ability to strike quickly, so you can't get too confident against them. But enjoy the moment. VMI playing good football. Kickoff will be shorter this time and returnable for Davis at the four yard line. And hit hard and brought down. Look at this enthusiasm at the 16 yard line. Great job there on Trip that Smith. tackle. Yeah, Trip Smith coming in to make the special teams tackle, and uh, that's textbook tackling right there. All right, on the screen, watch number 27 come flying in there. Nobody's going to touch him, and he is going to make it right there. So Georgia Southern comes back on offense, and, uh, yeah, slap his helmet. Good play as we are joined uh, for uh, a few moments here by Colonel Tom Davis. We'll tell you about him in just a moment here as we continue in the pitch out here. Coming wide is Myers. Flag is down. He's wrapped up back at the 15-yard line where he'll actually lose a yard or two. Mark Myers, his first carry in this ballgame. And we're joined by Colonel Tom Davis, sort of the unofficial historian of the Southern Conference. 30 years on the faculty staff here at VMI. He's published several books. Uh, Tom, among them, a book entitled The Core Roots, The Loudest, A History of VMI Athletics. Uh, you've seen a lot in, in your time here at VMI. Turn his mic around. There. Yeah, there you go. Let's see what the referee has to okay. say. Block below against Georgia Southern, and that'll, that'll back him up. So, Colonel Davis, if you will, tell us some of the things you've seen in your historical view of the Southern Conference. Well, uh, in doing the research for that book on VMI Athletic History, let me tell you something I'll bet neither you nor Ted knows, and not many of your members of your audience. Who was on the first ever pull-out cover of Sports Illustrated magazine? The year was 1959. Go back and check it, VMI and VPI, on the cover of the first fold-out issue. How about that? I would not have known that. Pitch out. And again, Myers, looks like he lost his shoe, and uh, brought down at about the 13-yard line. Myers indeed running out of his shoe. Colonel Davis, we just saw VMI's team here make history against Georgia Southern. The Eagles had shut out VMI against uh, him here at this at the uh, Memorial Stadium, and now they have scored. What are some of the, the highlights that stand out in your mind about uh, VMI's football team? Well, I remember the great days when I was a cadet. We won the Southern Conference Championship two years. I remember uh, beating University of Virginia three straight years in the late 1970s. That was certainly memorable. Um, watching people like Thomas Haskins, the all-time Division II uh, 1AA rusher, was certainly memorable. Uh, having the Naval Academy here in 1973 for the largest crowd ever here on this field, it was quite a scene. And there's just a whole bunch of them going back a long way. I remember seeing Bobby Thomason play for the Philadelphia Eagles in the early 50s. My dad said, I want to show you this VMI quarterback playing in the NFL. And Bobby Thompson, Thomason was quite a quarterback for those Eagles in the early 50s. Weathers carried for about four yards there. VMI's defense looking solid here on this drive. Now third down and eight. They forced the Eagles into a passing situation. J.R. Revere unloads, and Williams has it, but about a yard short of a first down at the 25-yard line. Still a great catch on the sidelines by Anthony Williams, the wide receiver. 5'10", 160, a junior, did a great job to focus on touching his feet down in bounds as his momentum carried him out of bounds. As you see, Revere having to throw on the run and gets a big sling behind it there. And then watch Williams' feet as he just drags him. Now, tense moment here on fourth and one. Georgia Southern electing to go for it, apparently, here at their own 25-yard line. We'll try to keep Colonel Tom Davis here in the booth without jumping out of his shoes here. And who do you think might get the ball? Well, timeout. 
You figure Peterson in this situation, and maybe Georgia Southern just trying to draw VMI off sides. Georgia Southern. And now the punting unit will come on for Georgia Southern when they come back. Coach Paul Johnson trying to uh, trick VMI into jumping offside. Won't work. They'll punt when we come back. 6.40 to play in the third quarter. Georgia Southern leads by 10. Tune in to CSS tomorrow for a doubleheader of college football re-airs. At noon Eastern, it's Ole Miss at Kentucky, followed by Florida A&M and Howard at 3.30. That's right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. And along with Ted Byrne, Jim Zoki with you in the uh, booth here in Lexington, Virginia, where VMI is within 10 of Georgia Southern, forcing the Eagles to punt here. We'll continue our conversation with Colonel Tom Davis following this punt. Shelton gets it away. The Titus Green will settle under it at about the 40-yard line and uh, gets about the 41 or the 42 before Davis wraps him up. No fair catch on that one. Ice water in his veins trying to make that catch in heavy traffic. Well, Colonel Tom Davis, uh, as we talk more of the history of the Southern Conference, I know you were part of the big celebration a few years back, the 75th anniversary year, and an important time in this conference history. It really was. We're the fourth oldest conference in the nation, and it was formed in 1921, and BMI joined in 24, and have been a longtime member, and that was a special year. To remind people such things as Arnold Palmer was a Southern Conference golfer at Wake Forest. Charlie Choo Choo Justice was a Southern Conference running back for North Carolina, so it was great fun looking at that tradition. So VMI in good shape here as they open up on first and ten. And they keep it with Coffin, who's had a terrific game so far. This time, no gain, though, on the handoff. Colonel, I think it's interesting, as you touched on just there, many people don't realize that the roots for the ACC and SEC conferences were really made in the Southern Conference. Many of the teams that are now a part of those conferences started their their athletic careers in the Southern Conference. Absolutely right. The early 1930s is when most of those Southeastern Conference teams left, such as Kentucky, and the early 1950s is when the ACC basically was formed by members who formerly were in the uh, Southern Conference. In fact, I remember one year in basketball, there was an interesting final in, the, in one of the regionals. The Eastern Regional in 1977. After this play, we'll get you to tell us who was in there. Kodiak back to throw. Runs out to his left and dumps it off. Oh, but Titus Green can't handle it. He may not have gone very far with it anyhow, but uh, unable to handle that short pass. Who was, who was in that lineup uh, that year? Four, four teams went to College Park for the Eastern Regional Final in 1977. Those four schools who qualified and won their way into the Final Four of the Eastern Regional were North Carolina, Notre Dame, Kentucky, and VMI. And the cover of that program with those four schools uh, is quite a collector's item. And you are the unofficial historian. Is that because you're a pack rat and you don't throw anything away? <laughs> exactly right. You must have seen my office. <laughs> I'm sure you're paid well for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wish I was paid by the pound. <laughs> Third and ten. Poldiak to throw. And at the 40-yard line, incomplete. Boom. Get the feet down, Solomon. And Cal McCombs and the coaching staff hopping mad. We'll get another look at it on the replay here, but he's ruled out of bounds. Tough break, too, because it was a good catch. Just ran out of real estate. Solomon trying to make his second big catch of the game. Has no control of the ball before he goes out of bounds. Looks like when his foot was down, the, the left foot was on the stripe. Good call by the referees who often don't get the benefit of doing a job well done. True. So 5.36 to play here in the third quarter. And BMI will kick it away. Trailing by 10. Williams back to receive it at the 25 and uh, breaks out of another tackle. Still going as he takes it up the sideline at the 40 and then run out of bounds there. Looked like uh, it'd be maybe no return there, but about a 15-yard return for Williams. Colonel, we thank you very much for your time and continue the good work. We appreciate that. You're a wealth of knowledge. My pleasure, Jim. Enjoy your retirement. Colonel Tom Davis joining us, as uh, Ted mentioned, the unofficial historian of the Southern Conference. And some, some great knowledge passed on here about this fine tradition. And we have a penalty flag down on that punt. Looks like we might be doing this again. No word yet from the referee. But Brent Barth will uh, apparently be punting again as we get set to get the uh, ruling here on that penalty flag. Offsides on the defensive line. Five-yard foul from the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. Was fourth down and 10, so no chance to uh, get a first down off that. So Barth will, will punt it away again. And again, Williams slippery and able to make a nice return out of that last one. 
VMI will take their chances again. Georgia Southern, six penalties for 43 yards. VMI, three penalties for 20 yards so far in the game. Barth under some pressure, and he's knocked down, but the ball was tipped, so there'll be no penalty flag there. Does well to get it off and to get it into Georgia Southern territory as it'll be down at about the 34-yard line. Well, Barth lucky to get it away, but it was tipped, and a lot of pressure coming from the Georgia Southern special teams front. And Barth upset that he's not going to get a roughing the kicker call, but they referee a rule that part of the ball was tipped. You can see just a little bit of it here on our replay. As you look through the bodies, pressure takes, will come from the right side of the screen. Takes a little bit long to get that punt off. Yeah, David Young coming in. So Young was the one that got a hand on the ball and ran into the punter. There's a handoff, Adrian Peterson, again spinning and slicing his way up to about the 40-yard line. Looks like a gain of about five yards for Peterson, who had 124 yards rushing in the first half. On paper, when you looked at this game, you, you really thought it was going to be much of a mismatch, but VMI has really hung tough in here, and their defense is well prepared for this ball game, and I'm sure in post-game comments, Paul Johnson will tell you that. Second down and five. Peterson again. Oh, nothing doing there. Matt Kluke and the rest of the defensive front for VMI able to push their way through and stuff them at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the left side of that defensive line for VMI. Watch him. Going to try to go to your right there. Peterson gets the ball, starts in, goes outside, but then in with the shoulder on him, Matt Kluke. Still a gain of one, the third down and four from the 40-yard line now for Georgia Southern. Things getting interesting here in the third quarter in Lexington, Virginia. No one expected this game to be this close. Peterson breaks out of a tackle, drags a tackler, summers ahead, and gets the first down. But Peterson, his leg strength is such that if you don't wrap him up on that initial hit, he has the ability to bounce off and keep those legs moving. And with the balance that he has and the footwork that he has, he just keeps going. Watch him on this. Coming to the left side. Gets hit. Keeps going. They've got his jersey, and he has to be dragged down from behind. Part of why he averages 164 yards per game in his career. Fumbled ball by Weathers on the pitch out. VMI thinks they have it. We'll see, though, as Georgia Southern is pointing the other way. It's a loose football. And they'll unpile the players here to see. It could be a big break for VMI. Eric Owen seems to think that he has it, but. Recovery, Georgia Southern. You're right. Georgia Southern comes up. With so good play and able to recover it was uh, Robinson. Trying to make the pitch, and it was a little high, and then he lost the handle on the ball, and it bounces off of the shoulder of Derek Screen into the pileup, and then Georgia Southern falls on it. Actually advanced the ball a couple yards, a gain of three, albeit a little nerve-wracking for Paul Johnson's team. Second down and seven. There goes Peterson, big hole up the middle. Drag down at the 32-yard line as Peterson continues to punish VMI's defense. Bubba Brantley and Charles Clark, Clark the center, the ones that really open the floodgates for Peterson to roll through on this particular carry. As you watch on the replay, 74 and 67, right there opening the holes, and there goes Peterson. Right off the hip and headed downfield. Georgia Southern continues to head that way. Pitch out this time. Nothing going there for T.J. Anderson. He'll lose a couple yards on that pitch out. And once again, Derek Screen among the defenders there to break that play down. And Screen is the man that made this play fail single-handedly. They try to get to the pitch out man, but they've got Screen right there tying up the blocker, Mark Myers. Myers does not make the block on Screen. And therefore, he's out there to clog up the drain. Three-yard loss that time for Georgia Southern. Brings along second down and 13. Clock moving down to 238 to play in the third quarter. Kidetsu lost 65-7 to seven last week. Only down 10 to top-ranked Georgia Southern. Forcing Revere to throw it up. It's up for grabs, and it's caught down inside the 10-yard line. What a grab. And a first down for Eric Irby, the sophomore, who went up high to bring it down. Boy, what a great job by the VMI defenders to try to scissors him, but he goes high and hangs on to the ball. Now, Revere is flushed out of the pocket and throws off balance off the back foot, kind of a wobbly pass. It was up for grabs, and just there, a great catch in the air, and great hands again by Eric Irby. Come on. 
His first catch of the season and a missed time to jump there by Michael Kirk, number 11 of VMI secondary. That places the ball down inside the 10. First and goal from the seven yard line. There goes Peterson, touchdown. And just like that, the big play to Irby, the handoff to Peterson, and Georgia Southern builds their lead. The play that Peterson picked up a good amount of yards on on this drive going to the right side was the same play he ran back to the left side. Third that, touchdown of the game for Peterson. And that is what got him open through that hole in order to get into the end zone. So now Shelton on for the point after try. Georgia Southern gets a little bit more breathing room here. Peterson's third touchdown of the game. All of them on the ground. 11 touchdowns on the season. High snap. Shelton's kick is up, though, and it's good. So Georgia Southern tacks on another point there with 2.07 remaining in the third quarter. They have built their lead to 24-7. To and good usage of run and pass in order to make that drive Keep going, and Peterson, of course, the man who delivers the payoff punch, and got a great block on the left side of the line, and Georgia Southern goes 66 yards, eight plays, takes 3.07. Peterson getting his third touchdown of the day, a seven-yard run. Just another day at the office for Peterson, another look at that touchdown run, and his blockers just deserve so much credit for the holes they open up, Ted. Yeah, the, the, when you have your cornerbacks and your safeties having to come up to make the tackle, you know that the offensive line is doing a great job in making the blocks. Peterson got through the hole so quickly. 164 yards on the ground in this game. He's done it on 20 carries and now 35 yards away from 8,000 career rushing yards in his career. So many times you see athletes of his ability have a bit of cockiness about them. But Adrian Peterson, I'm here to tell you, is one of the most meekest, mildest young men you'd ever want to meet except on Saturdays when he's got the pads on. It's Titus Green and uh, Solomon back to receive this kickoff now for BMI. And it will be returnable and short. One of the up men's going to take it at the 22-yard line. And tackled at the 25-yard line was Adam Brandcat, who had a rare kickoff return opportunity there. Well, those short ones, when they've been kicking the green all day, somebody else gets a shot at it. Sometimes that's a safer play, as opposed to letting green take one deep on you. Jamar Jones among those in on that play. So a 17-point lead now for Georgia Southern. A little bit more breathing room with a minute 57 to play in the third quarter. I mean, you expect the worst heading into this game with Georgia Southern coming in off a 70-7 win over Chattanooga and with the Key Dets having lost 65-7 to to Furman last week. But it's really not been the case. It's been a, a fun and competitive game today. Poliak continues at uh, quarterback. They continue to run it with the fullback, Cawthon, who pushes ahead for about two yards. While that's a good play, it sometimes takes an eternity to formulate. And uh, I think Cawthon has done a great job of getting the handoff and then turning and really looking to see where that hole is and then follow him behind the blanker, blockers. 77 yards, 22 rushes for Gene Cawthon. Overshadowed uh, as many backs are by the uh, day that Peterson is having on the other side. As VMI will go without a huddle. A little bit of a low snap, but Poliak handles it and rifles one near side. It's complete, and Garcia's got it up across the 35. That's going to be a first down for VMI. Deion Stokes on the coverage. Left cornerback right on top of Garcia as he makes the catch. Again, VMI will go without a huddle here. Clock will stop momentarily as they move the chains for the first down. Minute 15 remaining here in the third quarter. VMI needing a couple of scores down by 17 points. They'll switch Coffin over now to the other side. Working the entire game out of the shotgun, fake the handoff, and might as well gave it away. There was Joe Scott to eat up the quarterback, Dave Boldiak. Well, they were showing blitz to begin with, and Scott just came from the left side, just about untouched as you'll see on the replay here. Watch him coming right there up the middle and then brings him right down. Good job by the blitzing linebacker. Nowhere for Poldiak to go there and, and you look at the discrepancy in total yards on offense in this game through nearly three quarters now. 
323 to 144. For Second and 15, Boldiak with the pump. It'll throw a deep ball, double coverage, nearly picked off, getting a hand on it was James Young, but that ball out of bounds. Put a little too much air under that, and then the receiver got bumped off of his intended route. Garcia was supposedly on a stop and go, and they did the pump fake to try to freeze the defenders, but it did not work. Young coming over from his free safety position to help break up that play, but uncatchable and out of bounds anyhow. DMI will continue to work here out of the uh, no huddle offense. Makes it tough for Georgia Southern to uh, make substitutions on defense as well. On third down and 15. Boldiak, a little inside slip screen there. There's Garcia up to the 40. Not enough for a first down, though, as he gets gang tackled at about the 45-yard line. He'll be two or three yards short of a first down. Well, it didn't get him a first down. It got him a good play and moving the ball up to the 45, as you said, Jim, and I think you'll see on the replay. Boldiak does a good job to get the pass completion there to Garcia. He uh, goes that is the end of behind the fourth his block quarter. blockers the and got in there to run. the 45. And that clock did not run on the scoreboard, but it did officially here. So that'll bring along the end of the third quarter here in Lexington, Virginia. You have another look there at Garcia's catch and run as we had to break here. One quarter to go as we continue from VMI. Top-ranked Georgia Southern leading the key bets by the score of 24 to 7. As we go to the fourth and final stands of this one, Georgia Southern leads it 24 to seven. And Wednesday night, CSS has the re-air of Alabama, a number 16. Kickoff will be set for eight o'clock Eastern right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, as we had, that score was pretty close, so you might want to watch that replay come Wednesday. Here we've got a relatively close game considering what Many expectations were for this game. 24 to 7. And Georgia Southern about to get the ball back with a 17-point lead. Brett Barthon to punt it away for VMI. Williams tracks it down at the 20, breaks out of the first tackle. Moving laterally, looking for a block that won't come as he slides down at about the 21-yard line. Chris Walsh took his legs out from underneath him and caused him to stumble and fall. That Gives Georgia Southern the ball on their own 21. Last week against Chattanooga, Anthony Williams had a 74-yard punt return for a touchdown in that win over the Moccasins. Look at uh, Alumni Memorial Field here in Lexington, Virginia, as uh, J.R. Revere and the Georgia Southern offense comes back onto the field here. Another quarter to go. Adrian Peterson will continue on at fullback. He's He'll be pushing the 200-yard barrier before too long in this game. Revere keeps it, tucks it under, and runs. To the 30 and uh, makes it look so easy as he picks up a first down on a first down play, going for about a dozen yards. Revere just keeping the ball and going to the left side as he had plenty of blockers out in front of him, including Adrian Peterson. He is the second leading rusher for this Georgia Southern football team behind Peterson, came into this game with 194 yards on the ground, averaging 5.4 yards per carry as a quarterback. Has four touchdown runs to his credit, three via the pass. So from the 33-yard line, first down, handoff, Peterson. And he rolls up to about the 38 or the 39-yard line. Peterson bulldozing his way for a few yards there. And on the tackle, Brandcamp, Adam Brandcamp for VMI. See him there in the middle of your screen. As a defense, VMI allowing about 216 yards per game. That's in the vicinity of what Georgia Southern's been racking up in this ball game to this point so far. That was a gain of five for Peterson. Second down and five here now. Revere open. Weathers has it at midfield. Finds some open territory at the 40. Down inside the 30, spun out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. So another big pass play as Weathers takes it down into the red zone. And VMI's defense committed to the run so deeply on that. They had four men in the secondary. It was one on four with the odds in favor of VMI. But look at this, nobody around him makes the catch. Weathers scooting to the outside and four men in pursuit. Two had a shot at him and the other two were there to hem him in. There you see it from ground level as the defense saw it. 
but nobody around Weathers when he makes the initial catch. And then there's four red shirts chasing him. Musa Sarki had two chances at him and couldn't get him. Here is Peterson pounding down inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. He just never gets tired, does he? He just carries that load and gets right back up and does it again. He has enormous energy. 1999 Walter Payton Award winners. We check out some other scores and uh, another Southern Conference game underway. Appalachian State leading East Tennessee State. Richmond leading Villanova in the fourth quarter. Northeastern leading Delaware. Pitch out this time, it's Weathers again. Down to the five yard line before he's wrapped up and brought down from behind by Derek Screen, but not before Georgia Southern gets another first down. Weathers, while you focus in on Peterson, Weathers is another one who will absolutely burn you. He and Mark Myers both. Some other scores in the Atlantic 10. Richmond leads Villanova 30 to 21. At halftime, William and Mary leading New Hampshire 17-14. First and goal from the five. Revere rolling out. Scored on this play earlier on one that was brought back high in the air. Does he get it? Yes, he does. What an athletic touchdown by J.R. Revere. Up and over like Superman, and he scores. He had a touchdown brought back by a holding penalty earlier. This time he took it into his own hands and his own feet leaping into the end zone. The MI's defense attacked by the Air Force of J.R. Revere as he goes airborne huh. into a the end zone. Great block down low as well. Freeing him for that leap. Bangu was taken out of that play and just like that Georgia Southern takes a close game and they put a few touchdowns on the board and a chance to go up. 31 to 7 pending this point after try. And the kick by Shelton is up and it's good. So what was a 10 point ball game not too long ago has turned into a 24 point separation. Now 1256 to play in the fourth quarter at BMI where the Eagles are now rolling 31 to 7. Green Peterson has scored a touchdown for Georgia Southern today. It's the quarterback keeping it here and in pretty spectacular fashion getting into the end zone. Indeed he gets airborne and flips over the defender and crosses the goal line with possession of the ball right there. Wow. The ground causes the fumble, which it cannot do, so the ball pops out. It's still six for Georgia Southern. No trampoline, no spotter. <laughs> Just J.R. Revere flying high in the air. So 31-7, Georgia Southern leads, capping a 79-yard scoring drive. Six plays, and uh, as you say, they usually strike quickly. That a typical drive, less than two minutes for Georgia Southern. Right. Short kickoff here, pooching it. By the Titus Green return one. Solomon, though, is a pretty good uh, back when he gets it. He's busting loose at the 40. Up near midfield before he's brought down from behind. So that time it backfires a little bit before the tackle is made by Kevin Hurd. From behind, Hurd had to bring him down. Watch here on the replay. He's supposed to go to a linebacker or a defensive lineman, but uh, not one of the slot backs. And then he cuts back up. Gets a good block there, but then here comes Hurd from behind to track him down. So VMI with uh, 12.44 to left uh, left in this ball game. We'll uh, try to see if they can strike again, down by 24 points. Dave Poliak came on in relief, but the freshman Josh Lyles at quarterback and has fared pretty well. Here he'll throw out of the run and shoot. He finds Titus Green, who's got an opening on the slant in. He makes more of it as he takes it down to the 30-yard line. What a great catch and a, and a run by Green to get it all the way down to the Georgia Southern 30. Watch this catch. And a nice throw by the quarterback. Zips it right to him. Good catch. Catches the defender going in the other direction. Turns, spins, keeps those feet moving. Gets another five yards. That was Joe Scott, the linebacker, who was sliding. We've seen a couple of Georgia Southern players. Uh, Anthony Williams on some of his punt returns. Uh, maybe having some trouble with the shoes on this natural turf here. Cawthon had some trouble with uh, blown up play as he tried to uh, run it there. And Victor Cabral there to bust up that play for no gain. So again, going without a huddle here is VMI. Clock continues to roll down to the final 12 minutes of action. Coach Cal McCombs figuring another way to try to get his troops on the board again. Many have tried. Few have succeeded against Georgia Southern. Here they throw it back inside. 
And Pubogel again takes it and has another reception. He takes it inside the 25-yard line. Good catch by him and heavy traffic. Oliak did a good job of getting the ball right to him. Again out of the shotgun, kind of a low snap. Quickly fires it across the middle. And a good job of running after the catch. That play good for five yards, brings along third down and five for the Kedets. Southern brings a couple extra players up to the line of scrimmage. Here's Cawthon trying to bust through, gets near the first down marker at about the 21-yard line. It'll be close to a first down. The Eagles have not blitzed that much, but they have shown it on a couple of occasions, and they showed it there. Less checking off going on here in the second half, and again, I think the no huddle has created that opportunity for VMI. In the first half, we saw Lyles checking off a great deal at the line. For Georgia Southern, Michael Youngblood. Strong side linebacker. Fourth and one, VMI, if they can get the right personnel on the field, will be going for it here. I do have two timeouts if they need to burn one here, but Poldiak feels good to go out of this power set on fourth and less than a yard. And the handoff, and Cawthon's got the first down as he gets it inside the 18-yard line. So drive continues for VMI here in the fourth quarter. Cawthon single-handedly fighting his way through the defenders to get to that. And this VMI crowd a little relaxed, knowing that their team trails 31-7. Well, they have lost games by scores of 41 to 18, 34 to nothing, and 65 to 7 this year. This is their best showing in playing their toughest opponent to date, top-ranked Georgia Southern. Poliak fakes the handoff this time, steps up, avoids one tackle, but then gets brought down after about a loss of a yard or so. None of the white shirts clogging up the middle there on that play. Staying at home, Victor Cabrell leading the defenders into the hole and plugging it up. Paul Johnson feeling a little more relaxed than he did at halftime as his team has padded the lead now to 30. One to seven. This team's got something on the line here defensively as well. If they can hold VMI under 10 points, it'd be the first time they've done that four times in a row to an opponent since 1939. Single digits in four consecutive games. But here VMI is closing in, at least in field goal range now. Again, the inside throw to Pubojo, unable to handle it though as he steps inside. That ball drops to the turf incomplete. Carlton Oglesby on the corner there, kind of plugging things up. Oglesby the Defensive tackle got into the mix and got between the receiver and the quarterback and obstructed the view, really, of both. That incomplete pass brings along third down and 11 for VMI at the 18-yard line. Two receivers to each side caught in the single setback out of the shotgun. Poldiak will work and looking to throw. Completes it, and again, it's Puvogel at about the 14-yard line. Not enough for the first down. Now, it'll be interesting to see if VMI just goes for it here if they try to tack on three points with a field goal. Well, let's watch them as they come right into the living room here. Odiak dropping back. Move the sofa. Here they come. You look open. I'll throw it to you. Catch it. Got it. Okay. Don't drop the remote. Right there and knocked out of bounds immediately. VMI going to go for it here on fourth down and seven. And why not at the 14-yard line? Poldiak looking, he's got an open man. Cawthon at the 10, makes a nice move, gets it down to the seven or eight-yard line. This is close. It's gonna be very close to the first down marker. It'll all depend on the spot here. Of course, the chains are, as so often is the case, on the opposite side of the field when you have a sideline play like that. Cal McCones hoping that the offense was able to get the first down. And they are going to bring the chains all the way across the field here, so we'll see. They got that ball marked uh, right near the seven-yard line. And he needed to basically get to the seven-yard line to get the first down. Well, here it is. You make the call. Back in your living room again. We're sorry for not calling first. Oh, he's got a First down. First down oh, yeah. for Good call at home. Back to your pretzels. So first down and goal for VMI from the seven-yard line. And uh, 
They say there are not very many uh, moral victories here, but as you look at Old Glory here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Lexington, Virginia, uh, VMI's got to feel proud of what they've done on this field today. This has this is a, a gorgeous setting for a college football game, and and while you don't play for moral victories again, I think VMI definitely has to be pleased with different facets of their game here today. They have competed hard, to say the least, and uh, the drive will continue as a work out of the eye formation here and try to maybe push another score across. And Gene Cawthon, their best candidate for that, at the five pounds down to about the one-yard line. Getting in close. Well, look at his numbers again in the moment here, but I would think he's got to be nearing 100 yards and uh, has put up a, a fine performance here against a very stingy Georgia Southern defense. Watch the replay here and see how they gets good blocking. There's the pitch out. Back to live action here on second and goal from the one. Cawthon tries to push his way around, dives down low. Still didn't quite get to the stripe, though. A few inches short of the end zone. Good second effort, though, after he was stopped. Back about the three, he lunged his way to just about the one. Now it looks like VMI's going to get their beef backfield in. Mm -hmm. Bring in the Bruce Brothers here, but Gene Cawthon remains the uh, featured back there. The quarterback, Poldiak, keeps it, tries to dive down under. This is going to be close again. So far, no indication. No signal yet. And Fourth apparently no touchdown either. Fourth down coming up now. Not much of a push by the VMI offensive line to give Poldiak a, a wedge. He tried the left side between the uh, center and guard there and, and basically fell forward for maybe a foot, but that was it. Big lineup remains here now. Solomon and uh, Garcia Kubojo return in for VMI here on fourth down and goal. They just converted a fourth down play moments ago in this drive. They'll, they'll try again on fourth and inches here. Solomon bringing the play in. Five seconds on the play clock timeout. and timeout called by timeout. VMI. They VMI. just couldn't get it all together and lined up in time. Will be their most important play of the game when we come back in just a moment. Fourth and inches awaiting 31 to 7 Georgia Southern leads. Lot of green there. VMI though has just inches to go for pay dirt. They've only got one shot at it though. Fourth and goal inches away trailing by 24. Pitch out, Cawthon will try the right side, turns the corner, touchdown! Second touchdown of this game for VMI, which as we mentioned earlier, had not scored in their previous games against Georgia Southern on their home field. They get paid dirt twice today versus the top-ranked Eagles. And that play again was designed to start up the middle. And then Cawthon just wisely pulled back and waited for the blocking to take place. You'll see him almost push the blockers into the hole right there and then scampers to the outside. He knows, he's, knows that he's in and raises the ball high above his head. The trick is to raise it once you're sure you're in. <laughs> yeah, it looked a little borderline for a moment, but Cawthon had the assurance that he was in. And uh, VMI strikes again here in the fourth quarter. There is a conference going on with all of the officials over on the side. And there's flags in the end zone, and I'm sure because of holding Wait, the ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul against the defense. You'll penalize half the distance. Replay the drive. And I was about to say I thought because he held the ball high up that they might get him for taunting. But it is against Georgia Southern. But it's a penalty of uh, four and a half feet. So uh, just an easier point after try here now as uh, Matt Sharp is on for the conversion try. Good hold there by Brent Barth. That uh, snap looked a little bit low, but he got it down in time. And Sharp is through with the point after. VMI has got their second conversion. Well, the offense didn't miss fire, but the cannon did. <laughs> But you can't have it all. How about 14 push-ups? There you go. As well, now the cannon goes, and the push-ups are uh, underway at VMI. Again, uh, you talk about moral victories versus victories that count, and uh, 
not many teams are going to challenge Georgia Southern this year. A few expected this from VMI today. They've been competitive in a game against the top-ranked Eagles. No doubt. If this stays the final score, you'll look at it, and, and it really will not be, and you hear this all the time, but it's true, this really will not be indicative of how this game was. VMI has come in and defensively done some excellent things against the potent Georgia Southern offense. And their offense, meaning VMI's offense, has done a wonderful job here late in the game. And I think making the change in quarterback seemed to, to help. Bodiak seems to click a little bit better with the rest of that unit. And keep in mind, the regular starting quarterback, Joey Gibson, is out for VMI. So Poldiak has looked very good here. Lyles did not look bad. So some depth at the quarterback position for VMI should certainly uh, uh, be heartening to Cal McCombs and his coaching staff here. Boy, trying to get, it's not bad getting down because you jump and then you go do those push-ups and then you got to climb that wall again. And it takes a while for the masses to get back over. Yes, repelling training apparently needs to be <laughs> stepped up a little bit here. They're not used to doing this many push-ups. No. 14. I mean, just to give you an idea, in the eight games between these two teams, uh, Georgia Southern has outscored VMI a total of 387 to 40. So VMI has only scored 40 points in eight previous matchups against uh, the Eagles. The freshman saying steps. We don't need no stinking steps. Right. We'll get back up in there. Try for the... Uh, Onside kick, and uh, look who's there to get it. Adrian Peterson on special teams. How about that? They kicked it right to him. Penalty flag down. Maybe the ball didn't go uh, far enough on that try. Made a fair catch call, and when it's an it's onside kickoff. kick, you don't have right. much time to make the fair catch call. And they ran into him afterwards, so I'm sure now they're discussing, did he give it in time? They didn't give him the zone. What should we do? But this crew has called an excellent game here today, and I know they'll make the right decision here. I have a personal foul. Kick catch interference against the kicking team. 15-yard foul. First down. Well, Georgia Southern next week will be at home to host Western Carolina. VMI next week really gets not much rest as they'll go on the road at Wofford. So traveling down to uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, next for VMI, which has played fourth-ranked Furman, and now top-ranked Georgia Southern in back-to-back -back games. Say so the Southern Conference loaded this year. Look at Appalachian State and uh, some of the teams that will vie for the conference championship. It's going to be very competitive all season long. Furman and Appalachian State and Georgia Southern picked in the preseason as the top three. Revere to throw. And his receiver, Davis, was just beginning to make his turn and look back on the post pattern. That ball hit him in the back. And I think the defense certainly made him throw that ball a little bit quicker than what he wanted to. As you said, Davis had just gotten into the pattern and started to look back when it nailed him in the numbers. And Paul Johnson's team trying to catch VMI uh, a little off guard there, down uh, up by 17 points in this game, but throwing on first down there where you might expect to run as Peterson continues at the fullback position there, the single setback. It's time to more traditional play, the handoff to Peterson, but uh, that time VMI was ready for it. Hear a lot of uh, shoulder pads clacking down there and making that tackle as Peterson was stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Might have got about a half a yard. Last year when Georgia Southern defeated VMI 30, excuse me, 56 to three last year in the fourth quarter, the offense of Georgia Southern would run up to the line and they would tell the defense what play they were going to run. That's and, tough. And after the game. And you still can't stop it. After the game, Cal McCombs thanked Paul Johnson for that great. got an illegal support. formation against the offense. Five men in the backfield. Refused. Third down. Third down. But I guarantee you the offense isn't giving them any kind of a tip right now. No. And in that game, 56 to three, Matt Maxey kicked a 57 yard field goal as time expired to get the three. Pitch out, Weathers, wow. Whack, but he bounces out of it, but he'll lose a few more. A screen recovers, here comes the penalty flag in now. The initial hit was made and jolted Weathers backward and their screen was to finish off the play. D'Angelo Plather is the one that lays the first hit on. Derek Screen comes in as the closer on the deal. You'll see it here on the replay. The fake to Peterson, Revere outside, the late pitch to Weathers, and then right there is the first hit. 
And then Screen comes in with the payoff. But Plather's the one that really slowed that down. And I think they're going to call a penalty against Georgia Southern. Holding during the run by the offense. The penalty is refused. Fourth down. A good defensive stance there by VMI and Plather, who had an interception earlier in this game, continues his fine play. When you look at what happened last week to VMI against Furman and now what they're doing defensively against the number one team in the nation, I'm, I'm very impressed with VMI's defense and their preparation for this game. So the punt is coming. Shelton gets it away, hangs it up high. See if he can drop it inside the five, but he can't into the end zone for the touchback. That'll send us to break with 6-17 remaining in the fourth quarter. And VMI trailing top-ranked Georgia Southern 31-14. We'd like to welcome everyone watching this game on Comcast Sports Southeast, Channel 50 in Hinesville, Georgia. Hi to all you folks in Hinesville. And high time you got here, too. This is a pretty good game. Georgia Southern uh, leads it, but closer than expected. 31 to 14. BMI comes out throwing here. But off the near sideline, nice catch and carry by Pedro Garcia. And a first down on a first down play for BMI. The Cadets continue to impress with their offense in this game against the heavily favored Georgia Southern Eagles. We've talked a lot about BMI's defense and the way they've played Georgia Southern, but certainly the offense is getting on track here late, which will bode well in the future for VMI. Another score to pass along, Appalachian State at the half leads East Tennessee State 17-0. The Bucks from ETSU have to get ready and play a Thursday night game against the Citadel. So a tough turnaround there, obviously, in a Southern Conference matchup here. This is Dave Poldiak, who has played most of the way at quarterback, on in relief of Josh Lyles. Low snap, but he handles it, hands it off to Gene Coffin. Coming around the side, picks up another first down. He's close to it anyhow. Might be about a half a yard short as he gets it up near midfield. I like Coffin. He really thinks on his feet as a, as a back. Again, the low snap, but the, he's right there to get it. Then he takes off the other direction. And look at the speed as he turns it upfield. I like him as a running back. We'll get his stats in a moment, but he's got to be uh, somewhere around 100 yards rushing in this game. Keydets doing a little tomahawk chalk, chalk there. Yeah. The thing's everywhere. Yes, everybody. Who is. doesn't have a tomahawk chalk? 6.04 to play. Poliak looking to throw for some more. Hits Solomon. And about a yard short of midfield, but good enough to pick up the first down. And slow to get up is the quarterback who got a pretty nasty knock after he got rid of that football. There's some more scores coming at you. The one, of course, we talked about earlier, App State and East Tennessee State. Richmond leading Villanova just barely in the fourth quarter by two. Northeastern beating Delaware 20 to seven in the fourth quarter. Let's go, one, more. Come on. one double A scores there. Here the clock continues to move. BMI continues to move pretty well here in this game offensively. Solomon had a touchdown earlier in this game. Low snap, having trouble with his Poldiak, and all he can do is fall on it. The arm's getting a little bit tired now in that low snap. He just has to uh, drop on it to retain possession. Solomon with a second-half touchdown here for VMI. Gene Cawthon with a touchdown run. The two VMI touchdowns. Georgia Southern has four touchdowns and a Scott Shelton field goal. Adrian Peterson, their outstanding fullback, with three of the touchdowns on runs of 21, 15, and seven yards. And the quarterback, J.R. Revere, with a five-yard touchdown run, accounting for the scoring in this ballgame. Poldiak, catch and throw. Garcia has it. And won't get very far, though. Still short of midfield before he is knocked backwards. Garcia made a good catch. Didn't get upfield very far, though, to make the catch. Again, VMI flooding both zones with receivers. So third and 13 now for VMI. And they will continue to throw out of the shotgun. Five wideouts here. Poldiak under immediate pressure. A little inside toss to Garcia. Penalty flag is down. Garcia dives down to the Georgia Southern 45-yard line. But hang on. Again, a penalty flag is down. Garcia is about five yards short of what would be a first down. Go for it, 
day. And it's going to be a holding call against VMI. Not what the Kedats need at this point in the game. Needing some quick offense here, but if the penalty is accepted, it would back them up. If it's not accepted, it'll be fourth down and about five, so a decision to be made here. It looks like they'll back them up. Holding by the offense during the pass, 10 yards from the spot of the flag, repeat third down. That takes it all the way back to the VMI 40-yard line now, and they'll need about 19 or 20 yards to pick up the first down here, and they'll have a couple of tries here on third down. You assume they might go for it on fourth down, if need be. Poldiak will continue to sling that football with 4.02 to go in the ballgame. Three-step drop. Got an open man. It's complete, but again, well short of the first down as Greg Carlson makes the reception that time. His first reception of this ballgame. But here on fourth and very long, Coach Cal McCombs electing to punt the ball away as uh, Brent Barth comes on to punt for BMI. Under four minutes to go in the game, and VMI just unable to get things on track here. Williams standing back inside his 20 at about the 17-yard line, awaiting the punt here. Barth will get it away. One of the top punters at the 1AA level, certainly in the Southern Conference. Fair catch called for and taken at the 17-yard line by Williams as uh, Georgia Southern with that 17-point lead, not wanting to take any chances here and uh, risk anything here. They are uh, on the verge of improving their record to 4 and 0 oh, and you look at what Georgia Southern has coming up next and uh, home game coming up against Western Carolina then at Appalachian State homecoming game with the Citadel at East Tennessee State Ted and I will be working that game again by the way yes Furman Elon and Wofford the rest of the way after that 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 Furman showdown obviously looming large on November the 3rd Furman ranked fourth Georgia Southern currently consensus number one at the 1AA level. Elon right now, by the way, leading Gardner-Webb 21-7 with 28 seconds to go in the second quarter. New quarterback here for Georgia Southern. And not getting very far as he is wrapped up by Rubangu. This is the backup quarterback coming in for Georgia Southern, Melvin Cox, 6'1", 186-pound sophomore. Melvin has had time under pressure. He's uh, also come in in games uh, a good deal last year when Georgia Southern would get up by a number of points. He's even uh, had a snap or two in the national championship game. Former walk-on players had uh, some brief action this year, two of four passing, a touchdown, one interception. Doubt he'll be throwing much here, though, as he hands it off up the middle and not much there. And, and you're seeing a lot of secondary. Yeah, Jason Wells there. Folks in the ball game now for Georgia Southern. Jason Wells, a fullback. Sophomore 5'11", 210, and you look at VMI's remaining schedule, they'll be at Wofford. They play host to Chattanooga here, then they are at Western Carolina. Play host to Appalachian State. Then the, the Military Classic of the South comes up on the 10th of November at the Citadel. They'll close out the season against Samford and East Tennessee State. Third down and nine for Melvin Cox in the Georgia Southern offense. Pitch out here. Still going nice one, but you hear the, the clack of the shoulder pads there as T.J. Anderson is bumped out of bounds at about the 30 or the 31-yard line, but not before he picks up another Georgia Southern first down. And a hard hit delivered there. You can hear it at home. Gabe Hensley making the crack on him. So first down picked up there. The ball marked at the 31-yard line. Minute 52 as the clock stops with the play going out of bounds. Off. And again, they keep it on the ground. And Wells not getting very far that time. I want to say thank you to all the folks at VMI for making our stay here a good one. VMI Superintendent Major General Josiah Bunding III, Athletic Director Donnie White joining us at halftime, and the Sports Information Director Wade Branner who does double duties also on their radio network. That's a busy day from Georgia Southern. Thanks to President uh, Dr. Bruce Ruby, Athletics Director Sam Baker. We visited with him at halftime. As you see the busted play there for Georgia Southern. Assistant AD, and that ball came loose, didn't it? 
little pilot down there at the 25 yard line. And looks like Georgia Southern has retained possession there. Assistant AD and Media Relations Director Tom McClellan as well. We'll get another look at that play as uh, Cox was wrapped up in the backfield. Good exchange, but then the fake handoff, and he kept it. The ball does come loose there. And they rip it out of his hands. Surprise VMI didn't come up with that. It's like Anderson fell out. It's TJ Anderson who comes up uh, with the loose football. Back at the 26 yard line, so that makes it third down and 14. Final 45 ticks of this ball game here in Lexington, Virginia. Cox pitch out, Weathers at the 30. Up to the 40, picks up the first down as he falls forward to the 45-yard line. Picks up close to a first down, if not a first down. Uh, Georgia Southern could just uh, take a knee after picking up that first down, and uh, they'll be on their way to a 4-0 and record and 2-0 and in Southern Conference play, although, uh, Ted, as we mentioned, closer than expected, 31-14, to as Coach Paul Johnson picks up his 54th victory against just eight losses as head coach at Georgia Southern. And I'm sure that... He's smiling now because the scoreboard looks good, but I know he'll uh, he'll have some soul searching to do with his players about uh, their effort here today. I'm sure he'll talk a little bit about disappointment and some assignments missed. And all in all, Georgia Southern going to come away with another win. Jason Wells with another carry there gets a couple. Coach McCombs and uh, again a good game plan today. Uh, try to hold Peterson in check as best you can, but uh, uh, they avoided the big play as best they could. But, you know, Peterson's going to break a few. He did that today. But to give up 31 points against Georgia Southern, nothing bad to feel about for Red McCombs and his coaching staff. No, and for them to get on the board like they did, Coach McCombs, we salute you. And the clock has run out, and Georgia Southern is a winner here today. 31 to 14, the final score here. And Coach Paul Johnson uh, greeting some of the VMI players. Coach Red McCombs uh, will do the same and search out uh, Paul Johnson on the other side as they'll meet near midfield here in a, a well contested ball game today. VMI showing a lot on this field. And if this is an indication, they'll be a factor the rest of the way in the Southern Conference. We'll come back to wrap this up in just a few seconds here as top ranked Georgia Southern. Another victory today, winning at VMI 31 to 14.